I'm sure our amen could be bigger and better than that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. God is good and all the time. And that's his nature and wow, isn't it? And so we take this moment just to welcome each one of us, those who are joining us online, those who are in the sanctuary. Welcome to Parklands Baptist Church, even as we enjoy this experience dubbed the gathering, Banesa Sifiwe. And so I will kindly request those of us in the sanctuary, if we could settle down so that we continue with the program of the day. My name is Pastor Regan, one of the pastors here at Parklands Baptist Church. And on behalf of our senior pastor, Reverend Ambrose Nyangao, the associate pastor, Reverend Simon Mwangi, and the entire leadership of Parklands Baptist Church, we do extend a big hand of welcome to those of us who are here and those who are joining us online from all over the world. Those who are joining us online and even for those of us who are here in the sanctuary, please uh, share this link with your friends and family members even as we continue together. If you please need to use the washrooms for those in the sanctuary, down the stairs to my left and also down the stairs to my right, you will be able to find uh, the washrooms uh, just for you to use at your convenience. So I think at this point, please uh, let me ask us to be up on our feet. Probably just one more announcement for those in the sanctuary. Please make sure you're seated where there's a sticker. Please make sure you're seated where there's a sticker just to help us to be able to keep uh, to the Ministry of Health uh, guidelines and regulations. Please, throughout the service, unless you're singing or unless you're coming up here, please have your mask on. Also take advantage of the hand washing points and the sanitization points that are provided uh, within the compound. So please let's be up on our feet together as we read Psalm 67. Thereafter, we will be singing the national anthem, which is a prayer even as we begin this wonderful day. Are we ready? Are we ready? Can I hear a big amen? Are we ready? Are we ready? Amen. Okay. So let's read Psalm 67 verses 1 to 7, which is actually our prayer together. Let's go together. God, be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. So we'll take again from verse 1. I can't hear us. I need to hear us. Okay, let's go together from verse 1. God, be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Verse 2, that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Verse 3, let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you shall judge the people righteously. Sorry about that. And govern the nations on earth. Verse 5. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Verse 6. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. And finally, verse 7. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. I'd like us to take verse 6 and verse 7 again. Uh, just verse 6. Then what we shall proclaim there, then it says, then the earth we shall decree and declare there, then Kenya shall yield her increase. Are we ready? Let's go together. Then Kenya shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless Kenya and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Why don't you put your hands together for the living God, for there is none like him. And so we offer this prayer together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the saints shouted, Amen and Amen. Please let's remain standing for our national anthem, even as I invite Christine. Christine, Karibu sana. Baraka kwetu 
Haki wenga onam linzi na tu kai na udugu amani na uhuru raha tu pate na ustawi am keni ndugu zetu tu fa. Sote biti na si tuji toe kwanguvu nchiye tu ya Kenya tu na yoi penda tu weta yari kuilinda na tu jenge taifa. Kenya is the Hili Heshima Tunga ne mikono pamoja kazini Kila siku tuwe na ukrani Come on, we can celebrate Christine. Thank you for leading us so, so well, Christine. And God bless you. Please tell your neighbor, Karibu Sana, just through the mask, tell them I can see your smile. Yeah, you know you can smile through the eyes, isn't it? Okay, why don't you put our hands together as we invite Minister Irene Favor as she leads us this wonderful evening. Come on, let's put our hands together for this servant of God. Karibu Sana. The good Lord bless you. The, God, the good Lord do you well. I need a microphone for my good friend here. Thank you, dear Nai. Come on, let's appreciate the living God until dear Nai gets here. We can do better than that. Come on, saints, in Jesus' name. Amen. to every gate is thanksgiving a grateful heart can give you access to anything in life hallelujah so I want us to go before the Lord I am minister favor Irene Karimi I'm born again and I want us to just take a few minutes in the presence of God and thank God for who he is I usually tell brethren just go to the details and not that God doesn't know the details, but when we mention the details to him, we affirm him publicly. And when you affirm God publicly through gratitude, he comes and honors you the more. Hallelujah. So I want us to take time, three minutes in the presence of God and tell God, thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for your presence upon my life. Thank you for who you are to me. So let's go before the Lord and give him the glory and the honor that he deserves today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we come before you today and we want to thank you for who you are to us, Lord. We thank you for shielding our lives, oh God. We thank you for vindicating our lives, oh God. We thank you for walking with us, oh God. We thank you for providing for us, oh God. We thank you for intervening for our lives, oh God. We thank you for being a father to us. We thank you for being Jaira to us. We thank you for being Soma to us. We thank you for being El Shaddai to us, Lord. We thank you for being the father to the fatherless. We thank you for being the husband of the widows. We thank you, Lord, for walking us out and in of our houses in safety and in peace, oh God. Father, we thank you for fighting for us battles that we never knew that could counter our life. We thank you for speaking on our behalf on areas that we didn't know what to speak, Lord. 
we thank you for giving us eloquence of the Spirit. We thank you for filling us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for adopting us into your family that we are able to literally cry out to you and say, Abba, Father, to you, O oh God. We thank you because we are not abandoned. We belong. We thank you, Lord, that we are sons of light. We thank you, Lord, that we are the salt of the earth and we are the light of the earth, oh God. We thank you for your hope in our lives. We thank you for your salvation in our lives. We thank you for your redeeming power in our lives. We thank you, Jesus, for filling us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Jesus, for planting your word in our hearts, oh God, that we are able to yield to you, that we are able to submit to you, that we are able to walk with you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Abba Father, for redeeming us from being nothing to being something in the vineyard of our Father. We give you all the glory. We thank you for the song of deliverance. We thank you for the song of salvation upon our lips, oh God, that we cannot be orphans to you, but we can only be sons to you. Father, we give you the glory and the honor that is due to your name. We thank you for healing us of our warfare, of our lives. We thank you for personalizing yourself in our lives. We thank you for engaging yourself in our lives. We thank you for being intentional with us. We thank you for being so personal with our lives. We thank you for your voice upon our lives, oh God. We give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. Lord, if we were to sing the songs of thanksgiving, they could not be enough. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We are grateful to you, Lord. We are grateful to you, Father. We give you all the glory and all the honor. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 4, it is a narration that touches my heart in different ways that when God is looking for a worshiper, he can pick anybody that is postured correctly to worship him. Because worship is about the posture of the heart. It's not about the song. It's not the song. Worship is the posture of the heart. And we see God in John chapter 4 picking a woman who is a lover of men and baptizing her with intimacy with him that she is able to love him with depths that we can't explain. And I want us to go before the Lord as believers today and call this nation back to the place of worship of Yahweh. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We know that when COVID came, some of us, our intimacy with God was stolen. It was stolen by pressure. But we want to go before the Lord and tell God, Father, we are coming back to the heart of worship. Father, we are coming back to you. And we are saying, Lord, it's you who matters in our lives. You are the priority of our lives. Let's go before the Lord for two minutes and raise this cry from our hearts. Make me your worshiper. Make me your intimate friend. Make me a person who can sense you, feel you, hear you in the name of the Lord. So Father, we come before you today as saints gathered in one accord. We pray for our lives, oh God, that you may posture our hearts for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, may you call our hearts back to the place of intimacy with you. May you call our minds back to the place of intimacy with you. 
in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for our lives that we will pursue your heart. We will chase after your heart. We will look for your face. We will chase after your glory in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, may you baptize us with a passion for you. May you baptize us with a desire for you. May you baptize us, O oh God, with a love for you. That we will fall in love with you. And our love will never go cold in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, may you fill us with power again. May you fill us with zeal again. May you baptize us with your fire again in the name of the Lord Jesus because you are the desire of our hearts oh God you are the desire of our hearts you are the priority of our hearts and our lives it's you we want it's you we want it's you we want Lord it's you we want oh God it's you we desire. It's you we have come for, Lord. It's you we want to encounter in our lives. It's you we want to experience in our lives, oh God. Lord, we are tired of everything else. May you show us your glory. May you show us your power. May you show us who you are to our hearts, oh God. I want us to pray a very intimate prayer. A very intimate prayer. Let me read a scripture in Judges 20, verse 18, as I conclude my session today. The Bible says in Judges 20, verse 18, the Israelites arose and went up to the house of God, Bethel, and asked the counsel of God and said, which of us, which of us shall take the lead to battle against the Benjamites? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. There is something about worship as a tool of spiritual warfare that rescues a nation from all manner of confusion and limitation. Please talk to me, brethren. There's something about when Judah goes first. When worship goes first, victory is inevitable. And in this nation of Kenya, we know that we are in the elections here. And we want to speak to the atmosphere. And we want to declare the name of Yahweh. We want to declare the name of our Father. The Lord... Worship will proceed even from this altar today. Worship will go forth and it will bring deliverance to our land. Hallelujah. Please talk to me right now. Worship that will rise from this altar tonight will be the worship that will bring deliverance of this nation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore I want us to go before the Lord and take the tool of intimacy with God and tell God, God, we are here. We are your worshippers. Deliver our land even as we bow to you to worship you, to affirm you, to call you Yahweh, to call you Elohim. Lord, we stand as your worshippers in this nation to declare that our nation is receiving our healing. Our nation is receiving our peace. In these elections, we don't want any death. Please talk to me now. We don't want any premature death. We don't want any murder. And therefore we declare, even as we go for this Judah, that the borders of our land are secure in the hands of our Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go before the Lord in the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. We rise as Judas of our land. We gather as Judas of our land. And as we raise the sound of intimacy with you, 
as we raise the sound of worship unto you, Lord. We pray, Lord, oh, secure the borders of our land. Give us peace, oh God. Give us life, oh God. Give us peaceful elections, oh God. Oh, Kabosa, and Nebozita Yaboya, Rateya Hande Liboste, La Costa Lehando Libasto, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, our land is receiving her healing, our land is receiving her deliverance, our land is receiving her peace. Oh, oh. Balande Libokotaya. Bareste le handi libo, rikonda la masti kapola, handi likoste le ha. Oh God, we declare peace to our land. We declare security to our people. We declare life to our people. My God, ha handa la ba 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 ba, katala ma handi le bebe. My God, my God, ma handa la ba. As we lift up worship today, as we raise our voices in humble adoration, kingdoms of darkness are coming down. The powers of darkness are bowing to you, my God. Baraka taya la bo, raketa la mahande le bo, my God, my God. As we lift up a sound of worship to you. Oh, principalities are bowing, forces of darkness are bowing to Elohim. Oh, la ba 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 ba, sa la 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 ba, rakata la mahande le ba, rakata la mahande le ba. Jesus, come and be glorified. Come and take your glory. Come and take your place. Come and take your place. Oh God. Oh, kaya la la la. Rakayanda la bo, rakayanda la bo, rikata la ba bo, rakata la bo sa, rakatinda la bo sa, rikata la mahande, rakatula mahando. Jesus be glorified. Jesus be glorified. Jesus be glorified in the politics of this nation, in the body of Christ in this nation. Take your glory. Vindicate this nation. Cover this nation. Hide this nation, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We are hidden in you. We are preserved by you. We give you all the glory. And we give you all the honor. Blessed be your holy name. So, Father, we lift up one voice. And we say, Lord, come and take your place. We are tired of ruling our lives on our own. Come and take over. We step out of the way. Come and enthrone yourself. We step out of the way. Come and be glorified. We step out of the way. Come and be magnified. We step out of the way, Lord, for you, Lord. For you, Lord, for you, oh God. We are stepping out of the way for you, Lord. Take over, take dominion and power. Take charge because you are God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give a hand clap unto the Lord. A better, a better, a better hand clap to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, I'm not a hunter. I'm not a one to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords a mighty hand clap and a shout of praise. We are gathered here today to worship Him, to exalt His name, and to make declarations upon this country. So let us one more time. Give a mighty hand clap and a shout of praise to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because He is worthy and mighty to be praised in Jesus' name.
come on, just turn to your neighbor and give them a good look and tell them we are the gathering. And tell them there are 300 voices somewhere. Now give them an elbow and tell them be expectant today. Tell the other neighbor be ready to receive today. Tell the other neighbor be ready to declare a thing in the presence of God. In Jesus name one more time let's give the King of Kings a mighty hand clap and a shout of praise in Jesus name in Jesus name ladies and gentlemen we may now take our seats even as I just take this position to ready you to invite an amazing man of God this is actually the vision bearer for the 300 voices and the gathering are we all excited you, you know, when you invite someone who is great in the presence of God, we also must lay the carpet. Now, we may not have the carpet here, but your voices are the carpet. Are we together? Now, I, I, I don't feel the enthusiasm. Are we together? You, you know, I've paid some people over here in amazing hoodies and uh, jumpers. If I tell them to voice, that would be different. So I want us as the gathering to show them that we are also ready. Are we ready? I can't hear you. Are we ready? Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for none other than the vision bearer of the gathering in conjunction with 300 voices. Give it up for Pastor Solomon Sila. favor I want you guys to do me a favor praise the name of Jesus so I want you to do me a favor I want you to take your phones take your phones hallelujah it's good to see you Take your phones. I want you to share with somebody and tell guys we are live already. We are live on Facebook. It's the gathering page. The gathering, you can share that. On YouTube, it's Solomon Silla or Parklands Baptist. YouTube is Parklands Baptist, Solomon Silla. Facebook is The Gathering. You can still find me on Solomon, Solomon Sila Prophetic Worship. All those pages, they're all mine. Share with somebody, just tell them, we are live. Hallelujah. Amen. What was a dream now is. And I know some people feared the rain, but here we are, unstoppable. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord gave me a word for this gathering. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 1 which says, Let the islands be silent, but let the people renew their strength. It says, keep silence before me, O ye coastlands, O ye islands. Be quiet, but he said, but let the people renew their strength and he says let them come near and let them speak first things first is that 
as a nation, there is so much we've been fighting and it feels like the waves and the islands have been roaring and being loud and being everything. But now it's not, it's not us who are commanding the islands to be quiet. It's the Lord who has taken over the battle and says, let the islands be silent. But let the people who have been toiling, let them renew their strength. Turn to five people and tell them, renew your strength. Kenya, it's time for us to renew our strength. And it says, let them come and let them speak. Today we've joined and we're going to speak to the Lord. We're going to lift our voices to the Lord. Hallelujah. We've been having an amazing time since last year, December 6th, with this amazing team behind me. The 300 voices. And we are excited about what God is going to do. So today as we lift our voice, let's all stand up. We want to start by lifting our voices to the Lord. And giving him praise for the things that he has done. The things he will do. The things that he will do. He will perfect. He will perfect them. He's a faithful God. So we want to start by a prayer that says, Ebuana uninue, kwa imani nisimame. Hallelujah. Amen. It's our prayer today that, Lord, may you cause us to rise. This is our prayer, Lord, as a nation. Cause us to rise. Change our story as a nation. Cause us to go ahead. I'm grateful for our host here. Reverend Ambrose, Reverend Simon, thank you so, so much. We celebrate you. We honor you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
chapter 4 verse 11 says you are worthy O Lord to receive worship because you have created all things and for thy pleasure they were and are created you are worthy so I want to declare a song that says Master he here we want it's a song that we all know I want to lift our voices to the Lord and say Master he here we want
common doors indeed we claim uncommon victories we get uncommon favors we do obtain uncommon opportunities 
at the mention of the name of who? So with a lot of faith and enthusiasm, I'm going to count one to three, and I want you to proclaim the name of Jesus until your lungs find a new meaning. Are we ready? Yes. Are we ready? Yes. One, two, three. Let's shout the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. Now, I want us to do a quick activity because we are just getting started. Tell your neighbor, we are getting started. We are getting started. So I want you to take out your phone and let us do this quick, nice, and easy. Now, put your best smile, whether beneath the mask or otherwise, and I want you to take a selfie with your neighbor. Just a quick activity. Quick enough. Take a selfie with your neighbor. And I want you to post that on Twitter. Tag at Parky Baptist. That is P A R K I E Baptist. And I want you to use the hashtag The Gathering. I want you to use the hashtag The Gathering. Again, I'll repeat the quick instructions. Take a selfie. And I want you to tag at Parky Baptist. That is P A R K I E. And I want you to use the hashtag, The Gathering. I can see our senior pastor, Reverend Ambrose, smiling with Pastor Regan. Pastor Regan, I'm not jealous. I just wish I was where you are. I can see our associate pastor, Reverend Simon. And of course, Reverend Julian, taking an awesome selfie. So take a selfie. Yeah, I, I know what you people are feeling. You wish you are here. Me too. Me too. But that is why we are the gathering. Awesome. Take, take that selfie, post it on Twitter, post it on Instagram, post it on Facebook. Use the hashtag, the gathering. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we may now take our seats for the next segment. My name is Alex Barton, a son here at Parklands Baptist Church, and it is my privilege and delight to guide you in the next segment. Now, a quick bit is that we are live on all our virtual platforms, so go ahead and just access Parklands Baptist Church on YouTube, and you will definitely get to be part and parcel of this gathering. As we always love to say, we are in the clouds, and you are not being left behind because you are part and parcel of the gathering. Now, here ni awatu nyumbani. For you here, feel at home. We are just happy to invite each and every one of you, whether you're a member of Parklands Baptist or you are a member of whichever church you hail from. It is our privilege to invite you here at Parklands Baptist Church where we are in conjunction with the gathering and 300 voices. And let's give a warm round of applause to Pastor Solomon Sila just for birthing this particular vision. We absolutely do thank the Lord God Almighty for this. Now, if I may call your attention, we have a clip that we may want to interact with before we invite the next speaker. So if you may have the clip, please.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure and delight to welcome the father of the house. Kwa Kiswahili, tunasema baba wa nyumbani. This is a man well-renowned. He is a thought leader. He is the senior pastor of Parkland's Baptist Church. He is an accomplished writer. And today, he is here to start us off and minister to each and every one of us. Are we ready? Are we ready? Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. A warm standing ovation for none other than Reverend Ambrose Nyangao. Please be seated. We are so excited that you are here. The Bible says we are two or three gather in his name. He is there in the midst of them. I don't want to officially welcome each one of us to Parklands Baptist Church in Westlands. Uh, Parklands Baptist Church in Westlands. Uh, Parklands Baptist Church in Westlands. Amen. We want to also acknowledge the ministers who have graced this occasion, our fellow ministers in this city. I uh, want to say Karibuni Sana, uh, Reverend Julian, always great to have you. God bless you so much. Amen. Um, Reverend Tom Otieno is with, in our midst. Amen. We thank God. Uh, I have a minister friend all the way from Nyeri and his family, they are here. God bless you so much. Amen. Amen. We have uh, Reverend Simon Mwangi, who is... <laughs> uh, we have pastors. Uh, Pastor Flav is here. Good to see you. Amen. Our youth pastor, Pastor Maxi, God bless you. And I, I may not see all of us, but I want to say Kariboni Sana. I stand here not to preach, but I stand here to declare to you that the gathering is on. I'm saying the gathering is on. Hallelujah. And this evening is going to be an amazing evening. Uh, it's a, a, a meeting of an encounter. Uh, I, I don't know if you know what an encounter is. Um, we're not just meeting and gathering among ourselves. There's an encounter with God himself. Uh, and we are bringing this nation to have the same encounter with this God that we know. So it's going to be a great evening. Uh, and I believe uh, with the worship, with the prayers that are going to be made, the declarations we are going to make, uh, something is going to shift in your personal life. Uh, something is going to shift in our corporate life. Uh, something is going to shift in our city. Because one of the things we are saying in this gathering is, may God touch our church, may God touch our city, may God touch our counties, may God touch our country, may God touch our continent, and may the global scenery be shifted because of what is happening here tonight. Why don't we give God a big hand and just tell him thank you. And since I was given an opportunity to kind of give preliminary statements, hallelujah, and declarations, because others will pick from me and keep flying, because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And we do want to also remember those who are gathered online, wherever you are, you are part of this. We are the ones, we call you the ones in the cloud. Reverend Julian, you need to know the scripture about those in the cloud. Uh, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, um, um, and so they are gathered with us, and together we are one family. Amen? 
And just thinking about this gathering uh, and, and how we are positioning ourselves. I'm taken back to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. That says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. And out of those three, out of that scripture comes three statements. We are gathering, number one, our people. If my people. We are gathering those people in a place. My people in a place. And not just in a place, but then those people who are not just my people, not only are they in a place, but they are positioned in a spiritual atmosphere to shift what God is going to do in this country. The Bible says in Psalms 2 verse 8, Call unto me, ask me for the nations, and I'll give them to you as an inheritance. Today we are saying, Lord, we are asking you for Kenya. I am saying we are asking God for Kenya. Amen. Kenya is not going to anyone but to him who gave it to us. And so we are gathering a people. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, For you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation are people belonging to God. For once, you are not a people, but now you are the people of God. Why all these things? That you may declare the praises of God to the nations. And so we are a people. We are a special people. Sometimes the Bible calls us a peculiar people. And so we are bringing and gathering, not just us, but we are bringing the soul and the spirit of Kenya, and we are saying, these are your people, O oh God. And they are in a place. On the global map, Pastor Simon, we are located in a particular place. Jesus, when he left heaven, came to a particular place. There was a place. Born in Bethlehem. Brought up in Nazareth. Started ministering in Capernaum. Caused chaos in Jerusalem. <laughs> and rearranged the spiritual atmosphere. Well, it was a place. And I'm saying, these people today, oh God, are gathered in this place so that they can position themselves in a spiritual place and attract divine encounters in this season and in this time. The enemy is already shaking in his boots. You know why? Because the Bible says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. It says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And so even as I make a prayer and I release a declaration, we're not just engaged in a physical engagement. We are engaged in a spiritual engagement. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you are a spirit. Having a mind. Living in a body. And that is why tonight we have come to worship God in spirit and in, and in truth. Across denominational lines. Because we are sons and daughters of the kingdom. 
we are part of the kingdom. And as we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the things that we desire will be given to us. Let me tell you this. This nation will be used of God to bring revival in this continent of Africa. This nation. And so as we worship, remember you are a people. As we worship, remember you are in a place. As we worship, remember your position to change the atmosphere of this country. When Solomon, during the dedication of the temple, the Bible says, when he sacrificed, Pastor Simon, 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep, there was not even any place for it to be there. When he had done that, the Bible says the fire of God did what? Fell. Reverend Julian, may God's fire fall on us. May this fire fall. Starting here. In our own individual lives, our corporate lives. And may this city, this region, be changed. And those watching online, this same fire will reach out to you. So, remember you're a people in a place, positioned to reshift and to rearrange what God is about to do in this nation and in this region and in this continent. Hallelujah. You're a spirit. And so we are engaging in the spirit realm. So be alert, because through this evening, the spirit will be moving in different ways. And remember that song we sing, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, Father, I know this gathering was in your mind long before we were born. You knew a day would come when people would position themselves for their country in this election year and call on the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. And so Lord, as we decree and make declarations tonight, we are asking that you open the portal of the Spirit of God. Because God, we are a people in a place positioned to bring the kingdom of God here. Thy kingdom come. Lord, you have chosen servants, men and women of God that will stand here that, Lord, you may speak in them and through them to us and to the nation <clears throat> and to the continent. And so, Lord, as this servant of God makes that decree and declaration, I say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Elohim Adonai. Yekosh al Harashik Tekele Kakastetika. Jip al Harimash Kateler Kitekosha. Zamal Kiskurishela. 
Rabesit al karkatomosh kateshe. Valeri komazish. Riba kalelo sush kapetika la rushaka. Lema bakarite male krosurashe. Debeshima al karite kurishakala. Zeberil lo pratezis kalatenki takoshelela. Abba Father, ye ora mas kele rigaka, rima sel kishamateka, balerusk tamalekritaka, rima sila samal karetosi rashaka. Oh, marilar shemalar kosidala, rima ler kitemalashu molokuria tagasa. Le mir kama tebas la rikuman salanketika O Adonai Le vir kaseli rikusha malakariaka Rimaleri somorikale tendele kratagasitela Rishman talarikata la barasikeri hanai For God says even as I decree O oh, ancient gates, be lifted up. O oh, ancient gates, be lifted up. O oh, ancient gates, be lifted up. That the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord God Almighty, He is the King of glory. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And so the Lord decrees and declares, My people are a special people. My people are a redeemed people. My people are a people stationed and positioned for victory. And the Lord says tonight, as you lay the altar of worship and the altar of praise, my presence will come and dwell among my people. For I am the Lord. And there is no other. Beside me, there is no God. The host of heaven is positioned that the people of God may arise and do exploits. For the nations that fear God, the Lord will delight in that nation. And the nation that rebels against the Almighty, the Lord will switch off its light from the face of the earth. But the people who are called by my name, as they humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear their prayer, I will forgive their sin. I will heal, restore their land. For the Lord is enthroned in the heavens. And as men and women come and worship before him, the Lord will cause your light to shine. The Lord will cause the darkness to be parted. The Lord will release his wisdom in your midst. The Lord is here. May you fear and tremble. For the Lord is exalted in the heavens. O oh, Jehovah God. Visit with us. Visit with your people. 
May the nations know that you are God. May Kenya know that you are God. And there is no other besides you. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give God a big hand and just bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Let's appreciate the man of God with a warm round of applause. We are a people, we are in a place, and this is what is happening. We are being positioned. We are being positioned to change the atmosphere of this nation. I'm intentionally standing next to this flag, and uh, one thing that is similar about the flag and I, there is a color. Um, I am the light skin in our family. If you want to confirm, my brother Alan Sharma is here. So I'm the light skin uh, in the family and we relate. So I want us to do a small activity. I want you to stretch your hand towards this direction of the flag. And I want you to declare something profoundly. Declare something, not in whispers. Declare something out loud upon this land and nation of Kenya. So don't even wait for my signal. Just stretch your hand and declare something prophetic and profound upon this nation of Kenya. Because we are told in the Bible that we shall also declare a thing and it shall come to pass. So declare that profound thing, prophetic thing about this land and nation of Kenya. And believe, exercise your faith that it shall actually and truly come to pass. We are relying on the name of Jesus to transform this nation and we are being positioned to do exactly that. Declare a thing over this land and nation and believe that it is actually truly going to come to pass. In Jesus' holy and mighty name and we say and we say just to remind you that we are live also on Elevate TV and that is why we are feeling elevated. That is an elevation joke. If you have not yet grabbed it, wait until your passport is stamped. Probably you will feel elevated. Again, we are here just to have an awesome moment in the presence of the Lord. So feel free to laugh, feel free to rejoice and be in your father's house. Are we ready for the next segment? I need to feel the enthusiasm here in this house. Much better. Now, if you observe at every entry and exit point, there are amazing ladies and also gentlemen with reflect jackets. They are there positioned to assist you. So go ahead. And if you want any assistance, please reach out to them. If you want to be directed to various touch points, they are there to do just that for you. Remember, we want to make the gathering trend. Are we on the same page on that? Are we on the same page? So remember to keep tweeting. When Pastor Ambrose is uh, speaking profound words and you feel this needs to be broadcasted because we are in the cloud, ensure you tweet about it and use the hashtag the gathering and God will definitely bless you. Once again, we are live on Elevate TV and we are also live broadcasting on our virtual platforms. Now, for this particular moment in time, I want to invite one of the ministers of God's ministries to music. Now, this is a gentleman who loves to minister through the ministration of music you've heard him sing you've heard him bless your soul in your houses at aflewo and so many places <laughs> ladies and gentlemen give it up for none other than minister timothy 
Caberia! I like the sound of those clubs, but let's give them to Jesus right now. Amen. 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 Wow, bonus uh, few. The core activity in this meeting is to worship. This event can only be successful if you and I worship. Amen? Amen. And if all of us, okay, it's only the choir talking to me. If you and I worship, hallelujah. Amen. How do you worship? You just tell God who he is. He's loving, he's wonderful, he's faithful, he's a healer to me, and a comforter to most of you. Reverend Ambrose, I'm so glad. Where are you? Nice to see you again. You know, I love coming here because there's an African map here. <laughs> And this altar has been wonderful, just um, Sunday in, Sunday out, Wednesday in, Wednesday out, having a nation to pray over is wonderful. Because we are all created to worship God. And if you believe you're a nation, let's stand together and just adore him in these few minutes. My sister Grace leads us. We're going to just adore the Lord in a very beautiful song written in this country for this nation and for the world, acknowledging who God is. Hallelujah.
You know, worship is very personal. It's very personal. It's your relationship with God, your expression to God. So can we sing it again? Nalinua You tell it. So Lord, receive our praise.
in First Kings chapter 18. Elijah stands in front of Israel and asks them a very simple question and says, For how long? For how long, O Israel, will you waver between two opinions? Decide today if Yahweh is God or is Baal, if Baal is God. If Baal is God, then worship him. If Yahweh is God, then worship him. But today we're going to have a showdown and see who God really is. And it had to take a miracle of fire from heaven to consume the sacrifice for them to believe and see and be reminded. A nation that knew the story of the parting of the Red Sea, a nation that knew that there's a God called Jehovah and no other God shall be worshipped, but they had forgotten. And it had to take a miracle and a sign for that to happen. How I pray that that's not going to be the story for Kenya. That we shall be asking ourselves for how long are you going to waver? between opinions. God is God. Our politicians are not our gods. Yeah. Our, our hunger and our greed in this city, our greed for money, for the lust of the flesh, will not be our God. But we shall be a people that are not going to waver and know that God his name is Yahweh, Elohim Adonai, the Holy One of Israel, the Holy One of Kenya. So I want us to make a prayer to the Lord. The prayer goes like this. Jehovah, one being that we see the hand of God, but today I want us to see God. Amen. Only the bravest can say amen. I hope you are the bravest. Amen. So may we see God in our families, in our homes, in our nation. Amen. Right. So, instead of saying wawone, we are intentionally saying what to wakuone. So that once it's revealed, you respond and you worship. That's what worship is. You respond to a revelation. Can we sing it again? Sing. Jehovah
Jesus. I pray that our homes shall be filled with dancing, with rejoicing. Our stores will be filled with prosperity and blessing. As you said in your word that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. So Lord, have your way and receive praise from your people. If you're a Kenyan, shout amen. Amen. Woo! Shout aloud to the King, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Solomon, I love you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. But I need, I need to, to sing Shangilea with these people. <laughs> huh? do, you know, do you know what Shangilea means? Are you sure you know what it means? Shangilea just means, in my version, just, just get wild for the king. Sing to him. So let me hear you sing. Shangilea. You sing. No, 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 no. Really? No. I know it was raining today, but it was the blessings of the Lord. Sing like you've not been rained on, okay? <laughs> Let's go again. Sing. Shang. <laughs> My coffee. <laughs> I'm a Well done. Okay, let's go. Two, three, let's go. See for one. See for one. What be my coffee? See for one.
Wow. Hey, come on, let's one more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's appreciate Timothy Caberia one more time. Thank you so much for such a powerful way to minister to each and every one of us. If we may now take our seats. Tell your neighbor there is more dancing coming. Tell the other one there is more worship coming. So be ready for the next segment. Now I'd want to inform you, bring to your attention that as you exit at each and every entry and exit point, we have the theme vision book from Parklands Baptist Church. Again, we have the merchandise from the gathering at each and every entry and exit point. Feel free to purchase one and support the gathering and also get to just declare what the Lord has already positioned in your life. Are we excited? Yeah. Are we excited? Now I believe it because clearly the enthusiasm is there. Are we excited? Yeah. Now the next segment is an amazing moment to each and every one of us. So get your hearts ready and to usher us into this next segment. If you may have the clip, please. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before I mention his name, this is the only opportunity I get to say this. Your dress code, sir. I do not know the name of the designer. I do not know whether it is just you wake up in the morning and you find it's there. But this is what I'll say. Bless me with the same. When you're here, you have to declare a thing and believe it shall come to. So I'm occupying my territory. But see, I'm positioned. And I'm changing the atmosphere, not just for the nation, but also my dress code. I believe the message is clear because you do not repeat something twice to the prophet of God. Have I spoken? Now, if you come from the group of schools, you will say uh, Kula. But if you come from Huko Mashinani, you'll also say Chula. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a man of God, the senior pastor of Papa Center. Give it up for none other than Reverend Julian Chula. Come on, let's give God the glory. Let's appreciate the man of God until he gets here. I have 15 minutes and I plan to use them well. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please, if you don't mind, just play for me on a minor key. If you could, I'd appreciate that. Um, when Pastor Solomon, oh, thank you. Those of us who carry libraries, I was watching Reverend Ambrose. I said, Father, one day, <laughs> one day I'll memorize all my verses like that. Thank you. This is good. 
Thank you, Reverend Ambrose, for hosting us. Come on, let's appreciate Reverend Ambrose. Um, um, Pastor Solomon, thank you for putting this together for the wonderful work you and your wife have put together and to every to your uh, to, to Pastor Simon and the entire team at the Parklands Baptist to Bishop Sila and Mama. God bless you so much. It's good to see you. Amen. Every servant of God. My dear brother, Reverend Tom, it's so good to see you, my brother. I love you. I've missed you so much. Amen. We used to sing with Reverend Tom. We've grown older. Thank God for pastors who know when people are singing off-key. The gathering, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just have a few minutes to put together some declarations and then we're going to pray. And to pray towards the things that we've been asked to gather here about and to understand what the Word of God says about them. And I want to just go very quickly to Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. The Bible says, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder. Um, and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. Eugene, hurry up. I'm a bit naked. I need my prophetic flow. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. And as I've been studying and learning about why we are gathering here and what we've come to do and also to pray about the nation because we should be in prayer for this nation. You all have your flags. We should be in prayer for this nation. I do believe God is going to, God is going to change the story of this nation. So I want to deal with just two or three things. It says the anointing is going to break the yoke. What is a yoke? I believe a yoke is a satanic instrument of oppression used to limit a person's growth. When Jesus says, take my yoke, he, he did not mean his giving you a burden. What he was saying is move from the law into the place of grace. But in this case of Isaiah, it's dealing with the yoke. What they put on oxen, when oxen are plowing, is this yoke. And that yoke begins to sit on the ox until it becomes, as it eats and eats, as it plows, it plows, but after that you have to feed it. And once it eats, Whatever it's feeding on, it grows fat. And so because it grows fat, I don't know if you have the amplified version of that. Once it grows fat, because of what it's eating, the yoke is destroyed because of what it is eating. It says, so it will be in that day that the burden of the Assyrian will be removed from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck. The yoke will be broken because of the fat. Because of the growth, the yoke is broken. And because of that, that satanic instrument of oppression that has been used to limit the growth of Kenya tonight, as we make declarations, as we eat the diet of God. I think my amens are up here. As we eat the diet of God. As we feed on the word of God. While others are saying there's a casting down, we shall say there's a lifting up. Amen. This yoke shall break because the people of God are praying. Amen. And because of prayer, you're growing spiritually fat. Amen. And that yoke has no choice. In fact, it doesn't say that the yoke will break. The right word there is that the yoke will be destroyed. 
In other words, once it's destroyed, our children can't find it. Once that yoke is destroyed, our grandchildren will only hear what things we had to fight in our time. So we declare that everything that shall break in our time shall be destroyed. And the next generation will not have to deal with it. I believe that God is going to release some things tonight and over time and help us to understand where this is going. So that's the first thing is that, that the yoke is destroyed. The second thing I want you to look at, you're going to find it in Isaiah 21 verse 5. It says, prepare the table. Set a watchman in the tower. You can now go back to the older <laughs> version so that I don't take too long. Prepare the table. Set a watchman in the tower. Eat and drink. Arise, you princes. Anoint the shield. Arise, you princes. Anoint the shield. Now, when the enemy throws darts at us, there are different kinds of darts. When they used to go to war, and there were some darts that were purely just a dart, that, an arrow that was meant to destroy you. But there was another one that they would put the arrow in tar and then put it in fire and then shoot the arrow. And when the shield of the warrior would be hit with that arrow, because of the tar and the fire, the, the shield would catch fire. And when the shield caught fire, it disoriented the warrior. Because the shield is burning, the warrior can't concentrate, gets distracted. This is what we call the fiery darts of the enemy. And sometimes those fiery darts come into the mind. And because of the tar, because of the fire, you're trying to get those thoughts out of your mind. And those thoughts are not leaving. Because of those fiery darts, you're trying to stop thinking some things about your destiny and where you are today, but the enemy just keeps that dart in your mind, and that's because the shield has been affected. You are unable to get rid of the fiery darts of the enemy. So the soldiers learned a trick. I asked for some oil. Thank you, sir. So they would take the oil. Thank you so kindly. This is anointing oil. Cha. This is the anointing oil at Parklands Baptist. Hey. Look at your neighbor, ask them, how is your oil? <laughs> Those of you who take some drinks know how to open this. How do you open this thing? I have opened. I have opened. I just wanted to tell you how innocent I am. <laughs> so they would take the oil and they would place the oil on the shield. And when you place oil on the shield, a few things would happen. The first thing is that the darts that the enemy would throw would come and find an oily shield and they would slip away. One of the things the anointing does, that's why you anoint your head with oil. So that when the darts come, they bounce off. God tonight is anointing this nation with oil. The second reason, so every time that fiery darts would come, they would bounce off the shield. Tonight we declare in the name of Jesus, every dart that is being thrown in your direction, you're oiling your shield tonight. I've oiled my hand, but by extension it's coming to you. And because of that, this nation shall be saved because your shield is oiled. Somebody say amen. amen. We're going to make that declaration in a minute. And so the enemy would be frustrated because now you have a shield that's oily. You, this is called a shield of faith. And that shield 
is oiled. Oil your shield from tonight. You oil it with the word. You keep that shield around there. This is, that is why it's not called your armor. It's called the armor of God. If you study the English language, anything that is of means that it has ownership. So it means God did not make for you an armor. He gave you his armor. And that shield that you have is actually God's shield. Oh, glory be to God. That means that when you oil the shield, because of the anointing, the fiery darts of the enemy are coming off our nation. The fiery darts of the enemy over Kenya. Every illusion, every word that has been spoken up against this land, those darts that have been thrown to make us discouraged, to make us think that we will not make it as a nation, tonight we oil our shield. The second reason they oiled the shield is because it would play a role. And when they oiled the shield, it says, princes, arise, you princes, anoint the shield. The, reason, the second reason they'd anoint the shield is because it would shine. And because it would shine, it would blind the enemy. And when the enemy was blinded, he didn't know exactly where you were standing because every time he'd look, he'd see light. From today, when they look and they see your shield, what they will see is light. We declare when they look at our nation, what they will see is light. The thing with light is that it confuses the enemy. It makes the enemy think that you're far but you're near. It makes them not see very well. And so we're going to blind the enemy tonight because he's known your address, has always known where to come. But from tonight, your house is going to have a shield that has been oiled. And when I looked at our flag, when I looked at our flag, I saw a shield. And God told me, anoint the shield. Because when we anoint the shield, every dart that will be thrown into Kenya, there's a shield on our flag. And tonight in the name of Jesus, I call on you princes to arise and anoint your shield. And we declare from today, everybody that comes and speaks a word against this nation, those darts will not land in this land in the name of Jesus. There's a Nigerian saying I learned in the church. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I, was, I, was, I grew up AIC, I then went to Baptist, and I came out Pentecostal. The only place I've not yet gone is Anglican, but I'm coming. All I want you to know is that there's something we can declare tonight. We pray for every enemy of your destiny, for the ground to open up and swallow them. People are too nice. You're okay with the torment you've been going through, but tonight we're saying no more. There's a yoke that's being destroyed over Kenya that our children will not find. It's called the yoke of debt. And I want you to open up your mouth with me and say this with me. Say debt. I call you out tonight. We are not designed to carry you any longer. Because of the anointing, and by the help of Yahweh, we destroy the yoke of debt over Kenya. Now pray for the next 30 seconds over what I've just declared. We declare in the name of Jesus, debt shall not be our portion. We walk by faith and not by sight. And so Father, we know that we are in the billions of dollars of debt, but tonight we arise as princes and we anoint this shield. We anoint this shield of Kenya and we declare we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. No more debt. Father, we declare the children in this place and our children are going to come up with witty innovations. Light is going to come to them from above. Different ideas and innovations are going to come. Young Daniels are going to rise. Ruths are going to rise. Esther's are going to rise. Joseph's are going to rise. And they're going to bring ideas to the state. They're going to bring understanding to the government to help them with ideologies and understanding about how we must resolve the situation we are in. And so in the name of Jesus, we look to you and declare that this nation, the debt in this nation is broken in Jesus' name. The debt in this nation is broken in Jesus' name. 
the debt in this nation is broken in Jesus name the debt in this nation is broken in Jesus name why did I start with debt let me tell you a borrower will always be slave to the lender if they call at 3 a.m. you have to pick their call if they tell you to move you have to move but that's not our destiny and I call on princes to arise I see here advisors of state we see here new ideas that are gonna come up in this nation and change the course of this nation number two the yoke of barrenness it is illegal for a child of God to be unfruitful and so we declare in the name of Jesus this nation shall be a place where barrenness shall be broken and the anointing over the land we bring forth fruitfulness in the land every famine across Kenya we speak to you and declare hear the word of the Lord the people are praying we are calling out Yahweh Reverend prayed for us and reminded us that Lord if your people called by your name shall humble themselves and pray honestly seek your face Lord you declare that you will heal the land and so tonight we arise with this oil and declare as we have anointed this nation with the oil father that oil is able to break the yoke of fruitlessness we speak into every family and declare fruitfulness we speak into every business and declare fruitfulness we speak into every situation right now and declare fruitfulness I speak to the barren woman and I declare oh sing oh barren woman we declare in the name of Jesus Lord you are going to cause this land to be fruitful from Mandera to Lamu from Kisumu to Marsabit every portion of Kenya shall be fruitful in the name of Jesus somebody say amen, amen. I want to pray for one last thing and then my time is up Jesus prayed for Peter and said Simon Simon Satan has asked to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith that your faith will not fail you the Bible calls the shield it's a shield of faith and we've just anointed that shield today and so I'm gonna pray because no matter what else fails we're gonna pray for our faith tonight and we're gonna pray in this gathering that our faith shall not fail and so join me together in prayer as we declare father in the name of Jesus release fresh anointing across every individual under the sound of my voice and I declare father by your word our faith is rising this generation shall see your wonders this generation shall see your wonders this generation shall see tumors fall this generation shall see the blind see this generation shall see the lame walk this generation shall see men in the way you see men not as trees but as princes arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you tonight by declaration and by connection I anoint your shield of faith and I say your faith shall not fail you I'm praying for you that your faith shall not fail you father we speak into August 2022 and we declare our faith shall not fail us we speak into this nation we see this nation five years from now we are becoming lenders we see this nation five years from now we are exporting product all over the world we see this nation five years from now our faith is getting stronger and stronger bolder and bolder we refuse to die where we are today in the name of Jesus we refuse to go out this way in the name of Jesus and so tonight our faith is lifted come on I'm praying for you tonight our faith is lifted tonight our faith is lifted anoint every person here tonight Holy Spirit move in this place and release the grace the anointing that is able to break the yoke in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit somebody say amen I want you to look at your neighbor and say neighbor 
Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, this is not how you're going out. Please prophesy to them for me. Tell them your shield has been anointed. You're coming out of here better than how you came in. I see you two years from now. I call you champion. I call you prince. I call you son of God. And I see you rising. Where you are is not the end. I declare upon your life. The oil is going to work. The anointing has broken the yoke. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Let's give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords a mighty shout of praise. We celebrate you, Reverend, and we continue to pray. May the Lord bless you indeed. Thank you for the amazing declarations that you've declared on behalf of this land and nation. And I believe I am speaking on behalf of each and every one of us when I say, indeed, the yoke has been? Broken. The yoke has been? Broken. Now, I need us to say, in fact, if I may quote, the yoke has been destroyed. That means it does not have an opportunity of resurfacing again. Are we together? Yes. So I want us to say it with a lot of confidence. I want us to say it with a lot of joy and cheer. The yoke has been? Yes, sir. The yoke has been? Yes, sir. Now I want us to do it systematically so that we can combine everyone. So the, the lower deck, Watuwangu, I want us to teach the guys at the upper deck that the yoke has been? So are we ready? Then the upper deck, you, you, you gauge eh? what has been done. And then we lift it higher. My 300 voices, we also okay? So let's try this. The yoke has been? Yes, sir. The yoke has been? Yes, sir. And now let us uh, go to greater heights. Let's go to greater heights. Upper deck, are we ready? The yoke has been? The yoke has been. Yes, sir. Now let, let me try it with my 300 voices. Are we ready? With our flags, yeah? The yoke has been. Yes, sir. Uh, did you hear that? Those are 300. And we are the gathering. Are we? Are we? Now let's do something. Let's, let's do something. One more time. 300 voices. The yoke has been. Yes, sir. Now, are we ready? Upper deck and lower deck. Let us combine forces. The yoke has been. Yes, sir. In Jesus' holy and mighty name. Now, let's give the Lord our God a mighty shout of praise once more. Amen. Amen. And amen. Now, I have anointed myself as well. So that when I receive the blessing in the present, it can fit. I do not have a public opinion, so it is going to fit nicely. But see, don't worry about the color. That color is my color. So we will combine forces. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to unpack the reason, the why of the gathering in conjunction with 300 voices, it is my pleasure to invite none other than a man of God. Give it up for none other than Pastor Masha. Hallelujah! Let's try it one more time. Hold it as long 
as you can, all right? Hallelujah! Pastor Ambrose, I honor you. Hallelujah. Bishop Silla, all those years coming to visit Jedediah to your home in South B, they are counting still. Thank you for it to you and Mama Dorothy for always inviting me home. Thank you. All pastors and reverends and all protocol observed, I'm just here to quickly say why we are gathering. And with your permission, senior pastor, I invited my friend who flew in all the way from Uganda, Bishop Dr. Frank Tuheyo. I call him Tata, that means father. And why I invited him is the place where he comes from, it's called Kabale. That is the very place that the Kutendereza revival blew up from. And that's why I called him here today. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 18, chapter 19, and 20. I will not read, but I personally, and I love putting it that way, I personally believe chapter 18 was penned for this land and nation because the independence of Kenya is mentioned in this chapter. We are gathered here today and we've been gathered as the 300 voices for the reason of a generation that is tired for over 50 years a dragon has kept raising its head up, calling itself corruption. And it has eaten our fathers, it has eaten our elder brothers, and it is threatening to eat us and our children our, and our children's children, but it shall not be so. That is why we are gathered. We are gathered here because we are changing the narrative of this nation, whether the devil likes it or not that parts of this nation will no longer have to ask, are we in Kenya really? Because this land and nation belongs to God. And I always say this, that what Israel is to God spiritually is what Kenya is to God physically. And that is why we are a unique nation, we are a unique land, and we are a land that Isaiah calls a land divided by waters. Miles Monroe, when he visited this nation, he made this statement and said, our greatest strength is our greatest weakness. What is our weakness? The division along tribal lines. President Barack Obama visits this nation and says, the innovation and the creativity and the wisdom that God has given to the young people in this nation is greater than the young people in the United States of America. That is our portion. But we don't see it because after every five years we are tottering. This politician says this and we all go like that. This other one says that and we all go like that. But this one Today at the gates of time, on the 22nd of the second month of the 22nd year, it must stop. Today. This is the day that we go free. Psalms 24 is the verse and the chapter that calls us to the gates. We are not coming to the gates to, to, to negotiate. We are coming to the gates of time, which is the day today, to do battle. That Kenya must go free. Earlier in the day, Reverend Ambrose, I came into this church and went straight to the prayer room. And I, as I was praying, God reminded me of David addressing Goliath. Revelation, John the Revelator writing, and Isaiah also writing, and says, call to the wild animals, call to the birds of the prey, that they may feed of the flesh of our enemies. And tonight that must happen. 
corruption must be swallowed and must be eaten. No bone will remain. You didn't hear me. Let me repeat it in English. Let me repeat it one more time. Tonight, at this city gate, corruption must be dealt with. Tribalism must be dealt with. Hatred must be dealt with. Those who think they will wake up with the sun rising and still engage in corruption, war unto them. I stand on this altar and on this map of Africa knowing if Kenya stands, the continent stands. If Kenya falls, the continent falls. We will not be held responsible. So tonight, the gates are being lifted. The king of glory is coming in, but as he comes in, the battle is not ours. The battle is the Lord's. Politically speaking, the race is not for the swift. The battle is not for the strong. A surprise is hitting us square on the face in August. Those who you think are going to ascend are not ascending. Why? Why am I saying that? It's because some of us have come up and we have said, so and so is king of this nation. I stand to repeat what I said in the pre-gathering. Kenya has no king. Kenya needs no king. And Kenya bows to no human king. Only Jesus, who is the king of this nation. That is the king that we honor. In finishing, February 6th, the house of Arthur and the queen who sits on that throne has been on that throne for 70 years. February 6th was the 70th year. Just as Israel had to come out of captivity on their 70th year, Kenya is coming out of colonialism and, pre and, and neo-colonialism. We are going out and we will say, just as Israel said, when the Lord released our captivity, we were like those who do what? Who are waking up from a dream. And that will be our situation. That will be our portion. That is what God is leading us to be. It will be like waking up on a dream, out of a dream and coming into a nice place. This is my vision that I saw. 70 years coming, my great-grandchildren will be living in Northeastern on a 70th floor, a nice apartment. That is our portion. My time is up, but this is our declaration tonight. There is no room for tribalism, no room for corruption, no room for hatred, no room for poisoning that comes through politics. And any politician, any individual who tries to divide us, their tongue will cling to the roof of their mouth. I have spoken. It has been heard. It will be done. The Lord bless you. Amen. We do thank the Lord. Let's uh, appreciate Pastor George Marsha. And I now believe the why is clear. So this is a charge unto each and every one of us. Whom do we believe in? Whom do we believe in? So it will be unfair to the gathering in conjunction with my 300 voices. If you are the same person who will still go on Twitter and retweet, like, and post divisive sentiments. Are we clear? So this is a charge to each and every one of you. Let us embrace each and every declaration that emanates from this particular pulpit and believe that the Lord our God is in charge. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate the King of Kings one more time. In Jesus' name. And I, if we may have the clip by Bishop Mark Karaoke. Yes, this is a day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is the 22 of 2 of 2022. This is a great day, and this is a great event. It's so good to see every one of us gathered in this place uh, on this great gathering. 
I desired to be here in person, but I was not able to. But I am right here declaring to you that by God's grace, the purposes of this, of this nation shall be accomplished. This nation shall get to its destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. I am reminded of Proverbs 14 and verse number 34, that righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to its people. It is upon you and I as we gather here, lifting up 300 voices to God in praise and worship to call upon the Lord that God may intervene in the affairs of this nation. The purposes and the destiny of Kenya may be achieved in the name of Jesus Christ. As we look forward to the elections this year, we pray that the presence of God will be manifested in this nation. And we declare that no evil word spoken against this nation by any authority, whether political authority or ecclesiastical authority or social authority, no evil word spoken against this nation shall prosper. We declare it null and void. We nullify it. The words spoken by politicians that could bring bloodshed, that could bring chaos in this nation. We nullify those words in the name of Jesus Christ and declare there shall be no bloodshed in Kenya this electoral year in the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. And declare that the wisdom of God shall prevail even as we come to electing our people, our leaders. I pray that God would give us leaders that fear him, leaders that know him, leaders that respect the church, and that the populace of this nation, the electorate, the electorate of this nation, will not elect people because of their tribes, or because of their popularity, or because of the attempts that they have made, but we will do our elections based on, led by God, that we will choose leaders who fear God. Therefore, I pray that we will get leaders who have the wisdom of God, who have the heart of God for, for this nation in the name of Jesus Christ. As we lift up our voices together, 300 voices, let's call upon God to give us a leader, a president that fears him a president that honors and respects the church. I want you to know that everything has ears. The nation has ears. Powers have ears. And we have got to speak. When you don't speak, then you allow evil to prevail. Everybody put your finger like this and declare, Kenya, Kenya, oh Kenya. Kenya, Kenya oh Kenya. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. There shall be no bloodshed. There shall during the elections, after the elections, any other time, in Jesus' name, Kenya, Kenya, oh Kenya, hear the word of the Lord. Open your doors for our youth to get jobs, to do businesses without corruption in the name of Jesus Christ. Kenya, Kenya, oh Kenya. Kenya, Kenya, oh Kenya. Hear the word of the Lord. The of the Lord. Corruption, is Corruption is not your portion. Murder is not your portion. Is not your portion. Kidnapping of children is not your portion. Abduction of people is not your portion. Peace shall prevail. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Give the Lord a shout of celebration, everybody. Amen, amen, and amen. Indeed, these declarations will come to pass in Jesus' holy and mighty name. And now, if we may progress to the next segment, if we may have the clip of uh, Bishop Silla.
Now you know, they say, for you to get to the Father, you must pass through the... Who am I to introduce the next speaker better than Shilingi Kwayapili? And they say the apple does not do what? So the tree is somewhere. I can guarantee you I am standing with the apple. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Pastor Solomon Silla. As I invite him to invite Bishop Peter Silla. Karibu sana. Bwana sifiwe sana. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to thank God for today and for what God is doing. And what a joy to introduce my own dad to such a meeting. And the joy is that on 15th April 1994, he led me to the Lord. So he's not only my physical dad, but my spiritual dad. And I'm honored. On the 2008 uh, August, he, he's the one who still ordained me to, pass, to become pastor. And I'm honored to call you to minister to the people of God, Daddy. Karibu sana. seated please can you give a shout to Jesus uh, I might find myself in more in trouble because I get a bigger shout than what you've given to the Lord I thank God to be here today. Uh, thank you, Reverend Nyakngao, for offering this uh, place for us to come and magnify the name of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Reverend Chula, thank you for the word, the ministry. Um, Apostle Juma, I think that must be Reverend Tom, yes. And all the ministers of the gospel that are here, may the Lord richly bless you. I came along with uh, Mama Solomon. Can you stand? That has been my only wife for 40, 44 years. We also came with uh, Pastor Margaret. Pastor Margaret and her husband, Professor Kimuyu, were our best people in our wedding. <laughs> congratulations, son, and uh, congratulations, you people that uh, make the 300 voices. What an amazing, an amazing thing. When he mentioned it to me, I thought it was a far-fetched dream. But I want to thank God because God does those things that do not appear like uh, they are possible. Um, and I thank God every, for everyone that has come. For us to be able to lift the name of the Lord Jesus together is one of the greatest things that can ever happen. I'll say a few words. I thank you for letting me say what I'm going to say. I've, I've been preaching the gospel for more than 50 years. I've gone through the time of the time we had the great revival in this nation. And uh, now I understand what, what happened when the, when the elders were was, was shouting. I mean, when the young people were shouting because the temple the foundations of the temple had been laid, but there were some men that were crying because when they looked at what was happening, 
it never compared. It never compared with what they had seen there before. We are people of the kingdom, and I want to thank God for all the declarations that have been made here. We belong to the kingdom of God. When Jesus came preaching, he preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. It's a gospel where God is reigning. God reigning. That's what Jesus came preaching. That it's not just a matter of going to the synagogue. It's where you allow God to reign. And every kingdom, we have the two kingdoms that operate. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of the light. And the Bible says in him was light, life, light. And the light was life. And the life was the light of men. We have received the light of the kingdom, the kingdom of light. And every kingdom has its regulations. It has its own rules and laws. We belong to a kingdom called the kingdom of God. It has regulations. It has rules that must be obeyed. There are, there, there are traditions that belong to the kingdom which must be observed. There were, somebody mentioned the queen here. The queen has to observe um, the etiquette that, that must be observed in the royal place. And so we belong to the kingdom of God. And if we are to advance this kingdom of God, we have, to, we have to go according to the regulations of this kingdom of God. Saints, and I want to thank God, the majority of you here are young people. You, are, you have the energy. You have the strength. You can get things done. You can turn things around because you are young. I write unto you, young people, because you are strong and you have overcome the wicked one. I pray that that happens here with every young person that is in this house this evening. Bless be the name of the Lord. Listen, people. Uh, it's wonderful to pray, but there's something that I have found out. And that is, if we are to, 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 to work with God, we need to be in agreement with God. We need to walk in the way of the Lord. The kingdom of God is an eternal kingdom. The immensity of the greatness of the kingdom of God cannot be measured. And we need to understand that this, our God, is a great God. And I want to ask brethren and all of us that are here, when we are approaching God, we need to learn to approach him with reverence. If you see what Isaiah say, says about him, he says, when he saw him, he could not stand. He said, I'm, I'm finished. I am finished because I've seen the glory of the Lord. And many times I've seen us, even myself, saying God is in this place. And sometimes you ask, where? Yes, he's there by faith. But even faith must manifest works that are different from just saying. And this is one of the things we have to deal with. Our God is a holy God. God is holy. If God is going to save this nation, there's got to be righteousness because righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And we need to wake up. There needs to be an awakening. The truth of the matter is there needs to be an awakening of the church today to, the, to a place where we can say we are walking in the way of the Lord. The enemy has been out destroying and people, let's look at things. When you read the Bible, we are living in the very last days. The things that are happening were written long time ago in the Bible. And those things are going to happen as the Lord has spoken. And so there needs to be an awakening. I pray that this, the young people that are here, because when they sin, that sin will oppress and that sin will hinder prayer. And this nation, we call it a, a Christian nation. Sure? Are we a Christian nation? Are the things that are happening Christian? Then why do we? I, I heard you say yes, and then you said no. <laughs> Something needs to be done. The truth of the matter is men of God. Reverend Yangau, I think you relate this with this. That something went wrong. 
in the church in this country. What has been happening is the enemy came and saw tears. And when, when the, the, the wheat grew up, there were tears. And the workers went to the boss and said, we only planted uh, wheat. How come we have these tears? And he said, an enemy has done this. Did you know, people? The enemy has been doing it. This day you find yourself always on the phone posting things that are dirty. Spending hours on the phone and not a minute on the word. And the hope of this nation is not in us. It's you young people. You've got to wake up. You cannot worship God and live like the devil at the same time. If we pray and we are, not, we are living in sin, God will not hear. The son, David said, I, I don't, if, if, I, if I keep sin in my life, God will not hear me. If I treasure sin, and you know what happened? All these things you see happening have been planned. The devil has a plan to defile, to defile the mind. Because as a man thinks, so is he. And the devil has been working on the mind. The mind of young people, the mind of eld elderly people. That's why you hear a man of my age moving out with a girl. You hear he's, he's a side chick. What's wrong with you? Young lady, can't you see this? It's supposed to be your grandfather. But because sin, sin has become the new norm. Have you heard of the new norm? The new norm is having, having to walk in, in, in sin and you don't notice it. It's normal. It's the new norm. It's not the new norm for the saints. The saints are the saints of the Most High. They have been called to live in holiness and in the fear of the Lord. And I'm calling upon you in Jesus' name. The Lord spoke to me and told me to blow the trumpet. So I will blow the trumpet. In case you get hurt, it's the trumpet that is blowing. The time has come for the church to turn to the living God. We have to turn to the, to the living God. There needs to be a turning to God. And we know it. We know, we pastors, we know it. You people lead us in the church. You know there is something not right. There is something not right in the church of Christ today. And it can, it can be rectified. It can be rectified. And it is rectified through repentance. And repentance is not saying I repent. I have been involved in prayers here, national prayers, where we say, God, we repent. But repentance is not just saying you repent. Repentance is turning around, turning away from your sin. Unless that happens, there's no repentance. And, and there needs to be some people now to blow the trumpet. This nation is, is under a curse. This nation is under, under oppression by sin. That's why politicians will stand in a church like this and insult people and insult even the preachers. The time has come that the children of God must, must stand. We must stand. We must stand. Reverend, we must stand. We must take the position that we ought to as the children of the living God. We are the children of the most high God, but something needs to be done. We must walk according to the word of God. If we are not walking according to the word of God, then we do not belong to God. The Bible says you shall know them by their fruit. It's the fruit that tells whether we are saved or not. It's not whether we are dressed well or whether we are in tatters. It's because it's when, when we are walking in the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me... Let me read a verse. Hallelujah. Before I begin preaching. <laughs> a 
I'm reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 25. Because you see, there's this verse, a man of God quoted here. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. What does it mean? They are humbling themselves. They are saying, God, you are God. We are men. Have you seen how we are lifted these days? Pastors, we get more glory than the Jesus we preach. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. And he says, my glory I will not share with another. This kind of preaching is not very friendly, but... <laughs> We are not in the world to make friends. We are in the world to make people go to heaven. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 25 says, Your iniquities have turned these things away, and your sins have withheld good from you. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, if they shall pray, if they shall seek my face and turn and turn from their wicked ways, then the Lord says, I will hear from heaven. They will have to turn. It says your iniquities, your sins, your sins, Kenya, have turned a lot of good from you. Your sins, and I don't know whether you are concerned about what we are hearing. The suicides, the murders, the abortions, the, the homosexuality, the drunkenness, the drugs. Somebody needs to say, I want to pay the price. I will turn people from wickedness to righteousness. Because this thing that is happening can only be taken away when we turn to God. I'm reading that same chapter, verse 30. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 30. Oh my God. It says, a wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. <laughs> and the priests bear rule by their means and my people love to have it so and what will you do in the end did you hear that a wonderful and horrible thing God is saying a wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land the prophets prophesy falsely and the priests bear rule by their own means. They don't consult the Lord. They don't seek God. They just use their mind. They use their brain. That's why they offer motivational speech on Sunday to encourage the people to be motivated. But we need to have the nature of God besides everything else. Is this happening in a, a terrible thing committed? Is it happening in our country? The prophets prophesy falsely. People are saying God has told me when they've not heard God speak. Some of the prophecies even the devil cannot prophesy because they are not the right prophecies. And the, the, the strange thing is the priests are using their mind. And the Bible says, and the people love to have it so. People like it. People like it because they can live as they wish and they can do whatever they want. I must read one more. Chapter 6, verse 13. Oh God. Oh when the, and God is raising prophets even from among this group. 
Do not prophesy falsely. Do not say the Lord has said when he has not said. Do not prophesy. You, you better keep quiet. When you are quiet and you have the word of God, you will influence the people. But let the word of the Lord be the word of the Lord. For from verse 13, chapter 16 of Jeremiah. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. Have you heard, seen a nation that is full of covetousness? Covetousness. And sometimes we preach covetousness from the pulpit. We, it's everything is about materialism. People are selling their souls because they want this. They want material things. People are given to covetousness. And from the prophet even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. How many people are false here? How many of you young people are having several boyfriends and you, each one of them you call them, that's my friends, meet my friends. And you are saved. And you, you are the usher at the door. Oh my God. The Lord have mercy. Everybody that is entering the church is getting influenced by your falsehood. Young man, you are here. You have told 10 girls you want to marry them. And you are, you are singing in the choir. I believe you are not in the 300 voices. <laughs> and he says, and from the prophet unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. They have, they have healed the heart of my people. They have healed the heart of my people. How? Slightly. Slightly, you come to the church. I tell you, God will bless you. God will bless you. God bless will bless you. And you emotionally, you feel blessed. But when you go back, you're still the same person. I think I must close. How much time do I have? It's finished. Oh my God. Let me take two more minutes since you are my son. I'm reading verse 16 of the same chapter. Then I will close with that. Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Stand in the ways and see. And ask for the old parts. Where the good way is. But they said. And you will find rest. For your souls. Stand in the highways. Stand in the highways. Stand at the crossroads. And when you are there, ask for the good way. There is one good way. The good way is only one. Ask for the good way. And you know what? Walk in it. You will find rest for your soul. I'm saying to the church today. The time has come for us to repent. People need to rise up and preach repentance again. The gospel of John the Baptist must be preached again. Oh, thank God we are in a Baptist church. We need to preach the gospel of repentance in Jesus' name. We need to turn to the Lord. Families are breaking because we have not turned to the Lord. Young people are committing suicide because they do not have the Lord. They have church but not the Lord. You need to have a relationship with the King of Kings and with the Lord of Lords. You need to give your life. You need to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. You cannot walk in two ways on two ways at the same time. If you are walking on the way of the Lord, then walk there and you will find rest for your soul. Finally, I want to say this. This nation is in your hands, young people. You need to turn to the Lord and call on the name of the Lord for this nation. But you need to turn. Every one of us needs to turn from wickedness. We need to turn from evil. We need to repent. We need to repent. We need to repent. We need to turn to God. Because God will heal us when we turn to him. Let me pray. Father, heal us. Oh Lord, heal us. 
You are our healer. You are able to heal us. You are our deliverer and I'm praying for healing. Thank you for gathering us here with a, with a reason. With a purpose, O oh Lord, my God. And I am praying that you're going to cleanse us. Forgive the sin of Kenya. Forgive the sin of our young people. Forgive the sins of the prophets, of the pastors. Forgive the sins of the bishops, O oh Lord God Almighty. Have mercy upon us, sister people. Have mercy upon the families, O oh Lord. Some of the people here are in broken families. But you, Lord, are able to restore. We are praying for restoration of your people. Let the glory of the Lord be upon upon your people in the name that's above every name be glorified be magnified king of kings and lord of lords in jesus mighty name amen, amen. the lord bless you hallelujah hallelujah thank you bishop thank you one more time let's appreciate the lord the king of kings and Wow. And just before we see it, let's also appreciate Bishop Sila. Those are 50 years of grace. Hallelujah. Um, this church was so powerful to the young people of Kenya. And this shows that God is giving us a high calling as we step into this next season. And so to all the young people in the house today, this was our church. And if you're ready to step on to this next level as Bishop has declared, at the count of three, I want us to give a big shout. Okay, take your neighbor. Do they look young? Do they look young? Shake them a bit. Shake them a bit. Do they look young? If you know you are young, okay, young at heart as well. <laughs> At the count of three, we are shouting the name Jesus as we enter into this reality. Are you ready? Yes. Downstairs, are you ready? Yes. Upstairs, are you ready? Yes. Come on, one, two, three. Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Wow. Please, you may have your seats. We're just about to get into the second half of this night. Um, and uh, as we prepare to give, we'll be inviting uh, Bishop uh, Jack Kameri, who is guiding us in this moment uh, of giving. Uh, and then after that, we'll be inviting uh, other men of God who are ready just to go on with us onto the next level and you also appreciate everyone who is joining us online this is a global convocation and we also want to appreciate all the different churches that are here with us uh could you shout your church shout your church one two three okay okay uh i hear parklands baptist church ack rock assemblies um which other church in the house Okay, <laughs> sit down. Okay, they sit down here, all of you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Bishop Karibu, even as we give. Amen. From Nyeri, I'm here to do two things. And uh, if you allow me, since uh, Reverend Ambrose uh, spoke uh, there in the beginning, there is a word that has not left my heart. And it's about the gathering, and it's about the fire that came from heaven. And you know, in the book of uh, 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 30, Elijah called the gathering like we are called here. And then he repaired the broken altar of the Lord. And how did he do it? He brought the 12 stones that represented the tribes of Israel. And a few years ago, the Lord spoke to my heart. And he said that time will come that men will bring a gathering and go round our nation Amen. 
and bring the 44 stones that represents the 42, 44 tribes of Kenya together Amen. to worship the Lord. Fire will come down and revival will come and be with us here again in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to declare that the next gathering will be in the town of Nyeri. And that's why, that's why we draw from Nyeri. And even if this meeting ends after midnight, we'll still drive back because we begin to organize so that we can have in the month of March, on the 25th of March, the gathering will be in Nyeri. Somebody appreciate the Lord. In the month of April, the gathering will be in Nakuru. In the month of May, Kisumudala, we come. In the month of June, we go to Mombasa. I say, and I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. In the month of July, Eldred, here we come. Amen. So we are going to ask you to give towards this what they cost. Sometimes uh, uh, back in 1990, I went in a church. I was an alcoholic and I was uh, addicted in tobacco. And I had Reverend Dennis White. It was the time of offerings and he said, for God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son. And you know, going to church for me, you know, it was not a kawaida thing. Because the previous night, I'm coming from the hanging joints. And I was addicted in alcohol. And it was a struggle in my life. And I told God, if you deliver me, I'll live for you forever. And that evening, this is in 1990, in the month of April, there was a musical cantata. And I came back after I had smoked, chain smoked all my cigarettes. And I said, God, if you have power, save me. Let me see it happening. That night, I tell you, the word of God is powerful. I saw something come out of me like a dragon and go through a solid stoned houses. It went out. When I woke up the following morning, I did not need a deliverance class. I was totally set free. Free. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For some of us who love this gathering, we must dedicate something to God towards this gathering. And dedication is a sign. Dedication is expressed in giving. So tonight I'm going to ask you to give towards this dedication. I mean towards this gathering here tonight. There's a till number. I'm told a till number. You, you can do the Lipa na Pesa. Till number 941-941-953. You can leap out with the M-Pesa. 941-953. Uh, and then you can send uh, M-Pesa to Solomon Silla. Uh, 0724. 0724. Five eight four nine seven six. I repeat that again. O seven two four five eight four nine seven six. And if you have cash, there will be ushers here in front. There are some baskets, and the ushers will do that for us. And as we give, uh, Solomon Silla is going to do. 
a song. Let, let me pray for that. Lord, I thank you. Because the offerings of your people represents the works of their hands. I pray that you cause the windows of heaven to open. I pray that you cause the treasures of darkness and the riches that are hid in secret places to manifest on their behalf. I command the north not to hinder. I command south, east, and west to let go. And the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the blessings that makes rich and has no sorrow, follow God's people in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.
Come back, please. Please. Please come back. Please come back. Hey, please come back. Come back. Come back. Ah, ah. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah. Somebody say, Yeah. Wakosawa ama wakosawa. Let's give it up for this team. 300 voices. Oh my goodness. Now, Pastor Sila, uh, the online community is actually saying um, that we need to sing one song, a danceful song. And also, I'm sure the people in, in the house today also want to do some. To dance, I'm to see dance. Uh, rise up on your feet, rise up on your feet, rise up on your feet. This band is amazing. We just want to dance now as we prepare for the next segment. Pastor, I don't know what song is in your heart. Ileita tupeleka. And then we'll have uh, the dancers here. Let me have like five dancers here to show us some moves. Serious Woo! dancers. Where, where are the dancers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, get some space, get some space, get some space. If you have your heels on, you can kick them off. Ladies, if you have your, yeah, make yourself comfortable. You're just about to take it to a whole new level. This is the gathering. Okay. All right. Amen. We want to declare Jehovah Jireh, Mungu wa Israeli, there is no one like you. Come on, sir. Say, hold. 
on this one before we sit. Before we sit. We're gonna give you one minute. The band is gonna play something on the background. It is now you and your dance. If you want to go on the floor, if you want to jump up, if you want to go around, one minute, crazy dancing. Are you ready? Let's go. One, two, three, let's go. Sila, amazing worship time right there. Powerful, powerful. All right, are you ready for the next session? Are you ready for the next session? Okay, let's actually, yeah, yeah. Actually, let's let's just get right into it. This is a powerful man of God who is just about to come and share the word. Um, he's the founder of Elevate TV. He's an apostle in this city. The one and only giver up for apostle, David Juma. I hear the gathering. Amen. Give it up for him one more time as he comes on stage. God bless you, man of God. Amen. Amen. Welcome, sir. Wow, the Lord bless each one of you. It's a great joy and a great honor. Solomon, it's a blessing to be here and be able to add to what's going on. And I'm glad that we are live on Elevate TV, Advancing Kingdom Lifestyle. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And when Solomon talked to me about this and the purpose of the 300 voices, uh, I said this is something we must step into because I'm a lover of prophetic sound because you rule through prophetic sound and I left the father somewhere in there so uh, they will catch up later but I acknowledge all of them in absentia I've never stood on this pulpit since Adam and Eve so so I appreciate that I'm here right now I'm just gonna make some declarations with that kind of singing I don't know whether you are ready for declarations. Yeah. Especially with songs like those ones. Atindio mana kunanini? Hey, look at the scripture. 
I'm born again, saved, loving Jesus, serving him. Tomorrow we begin five days of festival of hope in Kasarani. Five days of the gospel campaign for five days. The tent is ready. I'm, uh, uh, from here, I'm going to the airport, and then I'll go to Kasarani before I sleep. Don't ask how. That's why there is the apostolic and the prophetic and the what you carry. I know the Bible left our hands. It went to the wall. Do we still have Daniel chapter 4 verse 17? Daniel chapter 4 verse 17. Can we all read? If you can, one, two, go. The decree, the decision. It's by the decree of the watchers and the sentence by the word of the holy ones in order that the living may know what? That the most high rules in the kingdom of man and gives it to whomsoever he will and sets over it the lowest of men. Wow. The Lord gave me that word for Kenya in 2007 that how leadership goes is determined by watchers these are messengers these are the carriers of God's word and in the New Testament those who carry those who watch that's a prophetic language the intercessors the holy ones the messengers, the people who hear from God, the people who have accepted God's mandate, God's commissioning. And this in the New Testament is the church of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, we are the church. Therefore, we are the ones given, listen, we are the ones given the mandate to be watchers. And guess what? then the watchers make the ruling. So the decision is by the decree of the watchers. Now these messages of God, they decree. Now decreeing is a very strong language in the Bible. Declarations, proclamations, decrees. These are words spoken by those in authority and the words travel, they become legislative in the spirit. They are so authoritative when they are released by those with the mandate and the anointing of Christ. They become very legislative. They become law. If you remember, okay, you don't remember, you are not there. Job 22, <laughs> verse 28. <laughs> the Bible says, and you shall decree a matter and it shall be established for you. And we like using this verse. I shall decree. It shall be established for me. But do you know verse 27? It says, and you shall make your prayers. Can you go there? Or oh, you rubbed that verse. You moved it. Nobody can move Job 22 verse 27. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Okay, your computer decided. So you shall make your prayer and Jehovah God Almighty, <laughs> whether it is a brother or sister or whichever the case may be, who is touching the scripture, Job 22, verse 27, may you have mercy on me and give me the verse. <laughs> me, I have it. You need to give it to these people. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's coming, then we pray. Why don't you stand up on your feet? <laughs> you will make your prayer to him. Somebody shout and he will hear me. Look, you don't make a decree unless you have come from a place of prayer. Otherwise, you are noise maker. You don't just wake up and say, today I'm going to make a decree. I'll get the devil out of here. Go, Jackie Dogo, Kijana. Pray fast. 
And not only pray, you do what Bishop Solomon, I mean Bishop Sila has said. You pay your vows. That means you align yourself righteously. That if you promised something, you make sure you do it. You are ready to live righteously. And because we have been hearing the word, God bless you, Bishop, for having mercy on me to come and hear me with your wife. May you live forever. <laughs> and because we have been hearing the word, so John chapter 15 uh, is true that you are now clean by the word I've spoken to you. That means now your life is ready to pray and then make a decree. How many of you know when you make a decree, it shall be established? Then it will rise to the level where we are now making the decision for who is going to be the next president, how Kenya is going to go. That can be determined here because of the anointing of the 300. So, the anointing of the 300, 300 voices. Oh my God, you know the foxes of Samson, 300. Hey, you know the 300 of Gideon. But do you know the ark that Noah was building? It had 300 cubits. Jesus. Although all the fundies who made the ark never made it to the ark. Tell your neighbor you must make it into this move of God. Okay, in English, because the whole world is watching. Don't be like the carpenters and the masons. I and mean, then those uh, artisans who made the ark and they never made it. Lift your hand and say, I'm, I'm going to pray for Kenya. Lord Kenya, may Kenya be what God you want it to be. Oh God, I pray. May this nation be. Lift your voice. May this nation be what you want it to be. Oh God, may this nation be what you want it to be. May this nation be, Lord, what you want it to be. In the name of Jesus. And Father, with the sound, the sound of the 300 and these uh, hundreds of men and women of God that are gathered here tonight. And those online, thousands of people, we lift our sound as one people, as one nation. And we declare, my God, something is shifting. Something is changing. Yeah, something is shifting. Something is changing. And Lord, as we lift our voice together, we declare, my Father, in the name of Jesus, we step into the anointing of the watchers. We step into the anointing of the messengers. We step into the anointing of the holy ones. Therefore, we make a decision. Kenya cannot go down. Come on, shout amen, somebody. As I decree, can you shout a big amen? We declare Kenya cannot go down. We determine 2022. How things going to go in the spirit. We rule right now. In the name of Jesus. We declare the devil has no place. In Jesus mighty name. Finally, 2020 April, God showed me because sometimes we see in the spirit and took me and I saw a meeting that was going on in the sea. Uh, well, for those who don't believe it's okay. Mia was there, you are not there. And I saw how certain people were trying to influence election of 2022 from the sea. And I saw the platform, and I saw the people. I can tell you, so and so was there, so and so was there, so and so was there. I heard what so and so said, I heard what so and so said, I heard what so and so said, and I saw the decision that had been made. Then I heard the Holy Ghost say, It is not supposed to be so. <laughs> and then the Lord showed me, or caused me to hear the song that was being sung to support that side and then I heard the song that was being sung to support the will of the Holy Ghost
And I know there are two sounds in the nation, but I have good news for you. When 300 voices stand together, and you and I and all the saints in this church of God rise up and raise our voice together, something good is going to happen. Our sound is going to be louder, is going to take over, is going to become a decision, is going to become a decree in the name of Jesus. I want you to lift your voice to heaven. Come on! Somebody shout hallelujah! Lift your right hand and shout hallelujah! And we declare in the name of Jesus the apostolic sound, the prophetic sound, the sound from the saints shall help rule, shall shift things in Kenya we declare marine spirits cannot rule cannot ordain for us leadership in this nation is given by God who rules in the affairs of men and he giveth the kingdom to whoever he wills even to the lowest of men let it be in Kenya 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 in the name of Jesus Shall we honor the name of the Lord, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords one more time. Just lift up your hands and honor the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God. Wow, you're just about to get into the next step. And such an honor to have the man of God in the house with us in this season. Um, let me first of all honor uh, my father, Reverend Ambrose Nyangao. Thank you so much, sir. I love you with all my heart. Um, and this is the time where we open our hearts for this next last push for the night. We have two men of God who are coming to just release another wave of declaration and open your heart because the final push, this, this, you know, there's the power of the final push. And that is where we are just about to enter now. So without much ado, I want to welcome this next man of God. He's um, a youth pastor. He's a youth influencer. Um, one of the um, influencers in our generation. You've seen him doing many things in the kingdom of God. Um, he's a singer. He's a pastor. He's a full-time husband. Give it up for the one and only Pastor David Ewagata. Welcome, sir. Hallelujah. If there's anything about this night for me, it's about the next generation. It's about the next generation. I want us to have our seats as we read from the book of uh, Judges chapter 2. 
And now we'll read it from verse 6. The Bible says this, Judges chapter 2 from verse 6. After Joshua had dismissed the Israelites, they went to take possession of the land, each to their own inheritance. The people served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the elders who outlived him and who had seen all the great things that the Lord had done for Israel. Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110, and they buried him in his land of inheritance at Timnah Herez, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. Verse 10 is where I want us to put our fingers and, and begin to reflect about this. The Bible says this, after that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who neither knew the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. Now, I want us to just try and recount how many things did this generation see? If you can remember the miracles and the great works that God performed to get the Israelites out of Egypt, just, just shout it out if you remember one thing that they saw. Uh-huh. The parting of the? The Red Sea. Uh-huh. What else? Manna. Oh, yeah, guys who love food. Manna. <laughs> uh-huh. What else? Water from a rock. Uh -huh. What other miracles did they see? The provision of quail. Again, what was chakula? Quail. Nyamachoma. What else did they see? The pulling down, the destruction of the entire army of the Egyptians. The superpower of the time. Now think about it. If by chance Kenya had a fight with America and we beat them, who would stop talking about it? In their entire lifetime, especially if you were in the action. Hey, you tell your children, my son, listen. This is what happened. The Americans came, and we came. And the Lord said, the Americans you see, you shall see no more. <laughs> Yet, and this exci the exciting part is about the things you have seen. Eh? Water standing by the side, as the sea parted to allow the Israelites to cross through. And for once, human beings walk through a life-size aquarium. And the fish found traffic jam, road closed. They're like, there's something amiss here. We can't cross, but there are people passing, and they are not drowning. And they are easy. Who would not talk about that to anyone they met? Yet there was a silence of a generation. And the Bible records that as all these men and women were being gathered to their ancestors, there was a silence. And I, I, I read this over and over in my youthful years as I've grown older. Believe it or not, I'm much older than I was when you last saw me. And it never dawned on me how a whole generation could miss out on hearing what God has done when when I read it, I'm excited thousands of years later. But you see, it's because perhaps these people were told, you know what, it's not your time. Let the old guys talk about their things. You little children, go and hang out there and talk about how to make wheels out of mud. And before they knew it, a generation remained in the face of the world that neither knew God. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, nor what he had done for Israel. This here is one of the most fearful verses for me because that generation that comes after me and the fathers here includes my sons and my daughter. My first born is 16, second born is 12, and my last born, hopefully, is eight. <laughs> my wife is right here with me. Uh, please stand up and just wave, Rose. Amen. You see, if I didn't have 
these children, I would probably be a bit light about what I say and what I think about the next generation. But my seed is in the next generation. And so we have to think about how do we deliver this gospel that we've received in its purity, in its totality. As Paul would say, I've not hesitated to share with you the whole counsel of God. How then does it become that the next generation comes up and neither knows God, nor what he has done for us? And as we were praying, as we, as we began this year, and, you know, <laughs> Pastor Solo starts telling me about this gathering, and I'm like, I'm not even sure what this is, but it sounds really nice. But as we were praying at the beginning of the year, praying for revival, praying for this nation at this particular time and at this particular year where we have the elections, God began to minister to us. And I remember sharing in one of the services we had at church. And God said this, listen. Every time God has wanted to, a prophet has wanted to release a word, he would call a minstrel. That is why always worship goes before the ministry. It's not just before, because we want to have a good performance before the word. No, it's because there's something that the Spirit of God does in the midst of worship that stirs the word of God to come, the rhema word of God to come upon the minister and be able to minister in the flow of the Spirit and in the power of his word. And God said, there needs to be a bathing of a new sound, the sound of worship. When Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 18, 19, 20 wanted to go to battle, was, was called to battle against an army, a vast army that was coming against him. And they come and they hear the news of the army advancing and they turn to God and say, God, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And God says, sends a word in the middle of the prayer and the fasting. And he says, do not, you do not have to fight this battle. Just go and stand in your position. And Jehoshaphat does something peculiar. Instead of putting the army at the forefront, he calls the worshippers and says, let the worshippers go first. Now, if you're part of a worship team and the army is about to go and fight and you are told to go stand in front, you realize your career is at stake. <laughs> but it's in the midst of that, that when God, when, when Jehoshaphat says, let's send the worshippers first, that the Bible says when they began to sing and declare the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever, God set an ambush against the enemies. And by the time they were arriving at the pass of Ziz, the war was over. You see, every time Israel had to fight, they would have victory, but they would also have victims. That when the people are coming back and saying we've conquered, there's a family whose son, whose daughter, or whose uh, whose father is not coming back. But in this one particular time, all came back. Why? Worship went fast. When the Israelites were crossing into the land of the promise and they asked, who shall we send fast? What did they say? Send Judah fast. Praise. And God spoke to us and said, God wants us to release a sound. And that is why this worship is so critical. Because, and, and, I, and I can tell you, the principle for the spiritual is also the principle for the physical. Look at the decadence of our generation. If you, want, if you don't know how decadent it is, listen to the sound. Bam lambes. Some guys almost responded. They're like, mm -mm. <laughs> Rebuke the devil. And you remember there was a meme that went out, there was a video that somebody did that would play classical music in Europe, play some Lingala music in Central Africa, but when it gets to Kenya, Wamlambe, right? <laughs> and what has happened? The, the sin and the debauchery has been played in. How do you defeat what has been played in? By playing it out. Send Judah fast. Send worship fast. And so I want to declare to us today, and I want to finish. I want to declare to us that this generation is awaiting for a sound. And when that sound comes out, 
it will capture not just the imagination or the, or the emotions of the generation, but it will capture the mood of the nation. May God give us a song in this season to bring together the men and women of this nation, all the 44 tribes, a sound that says there is neither Jew nor Gentile, male nor free, female, slave nor free, all are one in Christ because a sound has been released. And I pray that God would cause us to be the generation that will see a revival, an awakening. My prayer is that by the time we get to the 10th and the 15th and the 20th gathering, we will be having 14, 15 year olds up here. That's my prayer. And we are already seeing it. Because in the teen service that we lead at Baba Center, we have teenagers leading worship. 14, they go do homework and come and lead worship in the main service. And so may the Lord stir up a new sound. I want us to rise to our feet and just call on the Lord. Because this will not be captured by us talking about it. This will not be captured by us idealizing it. This will be captured, one, by speaking the word of God to the next generation without reservation. If they can understand the Pythagoras theorem, they can understand the seven principles of spirituality. This will come because we have prayed them through. If they can stay in a club the whole night, they can do a kesha. They can. They can. I know some of us are in that stage where the, that 9 p.m. is the new midnight. But they are in a place where 3 a.m. is still 9 p.m. Let them spend it in prayer. Let us declare, God, may our children, may the next generation hear your voice. Receive the sound of heaven, the sound of worship that draws us into his presence, draws us into his will. Let's just speak to God. Speak for the next generation. The population of Africa is, has a mean of 19 years. Pray for the 1 to 19 year old that God may salvage them from the claws of the enemy. Everyone is hunting this generation. But we have the privilege of knowing the one who bore them, who gave them life and we can bring them to the life-giving spirit of God. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord, for the young people. We pray that, Lord, you would bring them to the saving knowledge of Christ, to the understanding of your word, to the understanding of the things of the spirit. Lord, I pray that you would pour your grace and your presence all in and over us. Lord, not to hold back on your word, that, Lord, a generation may not rise in our watch that neither knows you nor what you have done for Israel. And so we declare it now that our young people will prophesy, that our young people will see visions, that our young people will hear the voice of God calling them and saying, this is the way, walk in it. Father, we declare, let your spirit move. Let your spirit move. Let your spirit move. Lord, I pray for every young person in this nation, in this region, in this continent, that, Lord, the word of the Lord will be rich and present to them. That, Lord, the move of the Spirit of God will be rich and present to them. That, Lord, you would draw your word into every life that Lord every young person will meet the cross of Jesus that in our time and season it will be said that your word was released to every generation to the young and to the old alike that no child will fail to hear the word of God no child will fail to encounter the spirit of God because we held it back from them Lord, may you cause us to speak about it in our coming in, in our going out, in our sitting, and in our rising. That Lord, you would release your spirit. On the next generation, Lord, we pray that our children will know you, that our children will hear you, 
we pray for every young person here we pray that their hearts will be steadfast they will be committed to your word committed to your will committed to your purposes committed to your cause that Lord they will know that there is no life apart from you they will know that there is no hope beside you they will know that there is no future without you you are eternity and from eternity past you exist Lord we give you glory we bless your name you are exalted you are exalted we you are exalted Ribabo zama tare koba saya mama yande. Rikobo shanda rama mazebete anda. Oh God, that our the next generation that rises will not lack to hear your voice, to know your heart, to know your will, to know your purposes. I want to invite the ministers of the gospel who are here with us, the fathers, to just come and join us. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we lift up the next generation. Father, we declare today that our children will be taught of the Lord and great will be their reward. We declare that Lord the word of the Lord will be rich in their lives. That they will be taught the truths of the gospel without being watered down, without being compromised. We pray that, Lord, they will be immersed in prayer and in worship. That they will spend their nights in the presence of God to hear the voice of the Spirit, to hear the word of the Lord, to hear the Rema word of God. I pray that, Lord, you will put a new song in their mouths, a hymn of praise to our God, that many will see and hear and put their trust in you because of the sound that you're raising in the next generation. Lord, I pray that we will be faithful to deliver your truths, your truths, your inerrant truths, you are incomparable truths to every young person. I pray that, Lord, as a church, we will invest our time and our resources and our energies to bring every young person to the saving knowledge of Christ. That the cross of Christ will be planted in the path of every young person. They will hear the word of the Lord. We declare that, Lord, the future of this nation will not be bright because of anything else but bright because Christ is in the future of this nation. Declare this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.
has been released. Come on, let's give God a big hand and just tell him, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We are standing here to release declarations. Out of that sound, we are declaring. Amen. And these servants of God are here. Uh, just the way we are, we'll start with myself. We'll finish with, um, I know the young gentleman, um, I would like Pastor Silla to be the one to finish so, um, so that we are, we are captured within uh, the fathers. <laughs> Amen. Amen. As we decree and declare, the Lord will be leading us and the words, the messages come forth We'll be picking some of those things that were spoken. Uh, one of the things that uh, Pastor Yogata was saying, that this next generation, the ones that are going to lift up this torch, because we remember the days of the revival ourselves, when it swept this nation many years ago. Uh, but a new season has come. A new season has come. When that fire is about to be released, to this generation, to the next generation. And so even if, as I decree and declare, and as I'm done, uh, Reverend Tom, you'll pick it, Reverend Julian, and we'll keep going. As we allow God to establish what we declare. The Bible says you shall decree a thing, and it shall be established for you. We are releasing words that God is going to establish on this earth. The Bible says you shall say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it shall be done for you. Because nothing will be impossible to you for those who believe. So join us, join your faith with our faith. Because I know, even as we are declaring, you declare. Let there be a sound that is coming out of your mouth. Because God will hear your voice. Even as we voice it from here, let the heavens hear. I remember one time when God told Ezekiel in the valley, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, Lord, you know. And God said, prophesy to these bones that they may live. Bones that have been scattered all in the valley. We are speaking to this nation. Yes. We are speaking to this nation and we are speaking to these dry bones. And God is saying, Prophesy to these bones that they may live. The Bible says when he began to prophesy, there was a rattling, a moving in the valley. Let me tell you this, in this nation, that rattling has begun. That moving has begun. Uh, the bones are going to move. And it's starting right where you are. And then later God said to Ezekiel, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy to the spirit. Let the breath of God come into these slain. And the Bible says they stood up. A great army. With a new sound. With a new sound. With a new sound. And the walls of Jericho came down. The sound brought down the walls of Jericho. I really liked again what uh, Pastor Iwakta you said. When you say that those who went to fight in the war came back. None of them were slain. We shall recover everything. We shall recover everything. Hallelujah. David asked, shall we pursue? And God said, pursue. And you shall overtake. And you shall recover all. We are recovering all tonight Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So lift up your hands even as we make these decrees in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And even as we are declaring, begin to just open your mouth. 
Hallelujah. In the name that is above every name, O oh God, in this precise moment and hour in time, Father, we decree and declare that there is no God but Jehovah God. There is no king but the King of kings. There is no Lord but Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We enthrone you, Jehovah God. We lift you up, O God. We bring this nation at your feet and declare that you shall be our God. You shall be our ruler. Lord, you know this nation. You know the season we are in. And we are coming before you, Jehovah God, to surrender every area of this nation into your holy, into your holy hand. And so we decree, Jehovah God, that indeed the gates have opened and you are coming in. Come in, Jehovah God. Come in and reign. Come in and rule. Come in and be Lord over this government, over our churches, over our denomination. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on this nation as it is in heaven. Oh, Jehovah God, just like the word came today, that, Father, we need to turn around. We need to, to repent of our sins. We need to turn around from our wicked ways. <clears throat> oh, God, today I decree and declare that these are your people. And, Lord, we are saying we are turning. We are turning. We are turning to you, Jehovah God. We are turning away from our wickedness. Turning to Jehovah God. And we decree that indeed this nation is being positioned for greatness. Being positioned for breakthroughs. Being positioned to carry the torch and the light of Jesus Christ. We are decreeing and declaring Isaiah 60 verse 1. That I said arise and shine. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. We are decreeing and declaring to Kenya and telling Kenya, arise, 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 arise and shine. For your light, Kenya, has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Give God the glory. Let's give God a big hand. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We honor you. We glorify you. We thank you that when walls break down, you send the, you send the builders to build. So we are calling forth the builders. In the name of Jesus. Those that will build the economy. We call them forth. In the name of Jesus. And all those who are planning to block them. We break down that blockage in the name of Jesus. We are calling for those who will build the church. That Father, you will raise them. And that the next generation will know you because they had you. But they will also know you because they encountered you in the name of Jesus. Father, we call forth the prophets who will see and prophesy what you have shown them. We call forth those who will be truthful in the name of Jesus. And we pray that you will raise them to build this wall of prophecy in the name of Jesus. That the nation will not be blind that they cannot see spiritually. And the nation will not be deaf that they cannot hear spiritually. But that you will raise for us prophets and put them as watchmen on walls. Position them to see the enemy coming from a distance. So that they will build the wall of prophecy. We raise up, Lord God, the teachers of the word. Who will bring perspective and understanding. That will raise the Josephs and the Daniels to advise government. To tell government what to do. So that government walks in righteousness. Raise the teachers of the word for the next generation. Because we were going to build according to divine code. In the name of Jesus, we pray that they will come forth and they will not be blocked. 
that they will teach in righteousness. They will never teach in covetousness. They will teach in righteousness. And they will raise a generation of wise people. For with battle, you need wise people. You need wise counsel. As we prepare for war with the enemy, we refuse to stay where we are. We choose to rise up. So, Father, I pray that you raise the encouragers. Those who are going to encourage prayer. Those who are going to encourage good life and good giving and good works. We pray that you raise the mercy and compassion givers. We pray that you raise people who are going to build homes and raise homes for those who are homeless. We pray that you raise people who are going to build up hospital and fix health care. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you raise people who are going to build up every single aspect of social life. That our social life will be characterized by honor. Our social life will be characterized by godly values. Our social life will never be thrown away to the dogs again. In the name of Jesus. Father, lastly, raise the builders of intercessory prayer. Those that build on their knees. Those that are built by you. Those that are taught by you. Those that tarry long without giving up. Those that tarry long without reward. Those whose only reward and portion is yourself. Raise up the intercessors. That they will pray. They will pray long. They will wait until the rain. The cloud forms like the hand of a man and begins to grow over the land. That the rain of God will come over the land in the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and we declare in the name of Jesus that out of this will come healings. The healing of the land. The healing of the people of the land. The healing of the economy of the land. The healing of the young people of the land. The healing of the politicians of the land. The healing of the officials, the civil servants of the land. The healing of the church in the land. The healing of the apostolic, the prophetic, the teaching, the evangelists, and the pastors. That further healing will flow in this place. So, Father, we decree that you raise the builders. That they begin to build the fallen walls, the broken walls. In Jesus' name we pray. awakening. I thank you that our generation shall witness and see what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what has not yet occurred to the minds of men, that Lord you have good things in store for us. Thank you for every word we've heard tonight, the exhortation, the rebuke, the direction. Father, I thank you that tonight in this house, men are being raised. Boys are becoming men of God. Daughters are becoming women of God. Lord, the oil is flowing tonight. And that oil is touching them right now as I speak. Lord, let that become a declaration for someone here tonight. There's a Billy Graham rising up in our generation here tonight. There's a Catherine Kuhlman rising up in our generation here tonight. And Lord, we would not, we would not be kind to such an amazing time in your presence without recognizing that you're setting some people apart here tonight. And so Lord, without apology and with confidence, we call out the Nehemiahs of our generation yes. here tonight. Yes. Yes. I call out every roof in here tonight. Yes. I call out Esther tonight. Yes. I call out Pauls. I call out Timothys. Yes. I call out the generals of our generation here tonight. I thank you for the passion for the next generation. Lord, I pray every weapon that is fashioned against any child of God here shall not prosper. The oil shall defend them. The Holy Spirit shall defend them. The Holy Spirit shall arise. You said you shall not leave us alone. You shall send to us a comforter. And that Father, he shall guide us into a dimension of all truth yes. tonight let people enter a place of all truth i'm going to do something i have some oil here and i want to use this oil as a symbol of the holy spirit and say father let the holy spirit anoint people here tonight 
let them be called out from where they are sitting where they are standing tonight in the name of Jesus nobody is too young nobody is too old tonight differentiate people tonight differentiate people tonight differentiate destinies tonight call out Joseph from his brothers tonight call out Paul from among those that were persecuting tonight call out Peter in the name of Jesus let the oil speak tonight raise up a generation that will fear you father as pastor preached none of us shall be lost nobody in this room tonight shall be lost and so we declare safety in the name of Jesus every satanic attempt over your life is defeated in the name of Jesus every disease that has come to shorten your life is defeated in the name of Jesus everything that has come to hinder your movement from progress from destiny tonight we put it under your feet in the name of Jesus prophetically we have been sandwiched between oil we have been put between two generals of this land father so let it be in our lives that we will always be sandwiched because even Jesus you said that the man said to you the general said to you he's a man under authority and so tonight father we understand we are men and women under authority let us always be in a sandwich mode looking towards fathers and looking towards the next generation let something arise here tonight father I stand in the gap and declare this generation shall know you my generation shall know you the next generation shall know you Lord the churches shall be full of people that are looking to you not to be entertained but looking to seek your face tonight let there be awakening in the name of Jesus tonight we move forward we come against every fiery dart of depression depression you have no permission on any person here in the name of Jesus spirit of suicide we come against you in the name of Jesus we shall not lose one in the name of Jesus we come against every emotional abuse in our generation in the name of Jesus every mental abuse in the name of Jesus I address you now leave the children of God every phone addiction I'm speaking to you right now you lose your hold on the children of God you have no right on the children of God we declare you are powerless in the name of Jesus every sexual addiction hear the voice of the Lord you shall leave the children of God alone every pornographic addiction I'm dealing with fiery darts of the enemy every pornographic addiction tonight this night of the 22nd of the second month of the 22nd year we shall mark this as the day that you are put under our feet I command every enemy of your destiny that the ground will open up and swallow them now in the name of Jesus we command the blood of Jesus to work in your house we command the blood of Jesus to work in your office we command the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus in your marriage, in your family, in your office, in your destiny. Now in the name of Jesus, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God be God and every man be a liar. Tonight is a setting apart night in the name of Jesus. We set you apart for this generation. We set you apart for this continent. We set you aside for this generation from here to Korea to China the word has been preserved in Africa for such a time as this the missionaries came from outside to Africa now the missionaries will leave Africa to the world every time you wanted to preserve every time you wanted to preserve something God every time you wanted to preserve something you hid it in Africa when you wanted to hide your deliverer for the children of Israel, you hid him in Africa. When you wanted to hide the Lord and Savior from the pursuit of Herod, you hid him in Africa. This word has been hidden in this continent that has been called every dark thing, every, every hard thing, the dark continent, the people that can't read, the people that cannot do. But God, what people rejected is about to be lifted up. Now raise men, raise men, to take this gospel purified gospel into the world tonight we set them apart in the name of Jesus and as the spirit leads as we all minister here tonight let hungry men and hungry women come forth and receive that setting apart right now 
let them come to this altar and receive that setting apart right now that as we continue to pray for them let this generation say I will no longer I'm calling you to the altar if you want to be set apart there is a grace here for being set apart in your generation let them be set apart for this generation everyone who will speak after me and who has spoken before me will continue to release this oil you are set apart for this generation you are set apart for your generation David served God in his generation and died you cannot serve God in another generation you can only serve God in your generation. May you be set apart. The oil is fighting for you. The oil is working for you. The oil is setting you apart. The oil is giving you hope. The oil is killing every thought that has caused you to think that God had left you. This generation shall live and shall not die. This generation shall live and shall not die. You are being set apart. You can just kneel wherever you are if you're receiving this. You are being set apart for such a time 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 as this I want to read a scripture over you and then I'll move the word of the Lord says justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Let these men and women walk in the light of your countenance. In thy name they shall rejoice all day. Anything causing you not to rejoice is under your feet. And in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength. And in thy favor... Our horn shall be exalted. For the Lord is our defense. And the Holy One of Israel is our king. Then thou speakest in vision to thy Holy One and said, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have chosen one out of the people. Tonight Yahweh is choosing his people for this generation. You're being set apart. You're being set apart for this generation. Set apart for this generation. May the calendar of heaven and the calendar of earth match tonight in seeing who God has called for this work. His work. His work for his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we continue to bless this next generation. Thank you for the anointing that has been released. The anointing, oh God. You said when the anointing shall come, that the yoke shall be destroyed. Yes. And the burden shall be removed from off their shoulders. Lord, I decree in this generation that you give them the gift of designing of spirits in the name of Jesus so that they will be able to distinguish what is right and what is evil in the mighty name of Jesus like you did to Saul when he was anointed father the donkeys that were lost the anointing caused him to recover I declare that this generation will recover everything that has been stolen in by the devil in the church in the name of Jesus, I want to prophesy a supernatural progression. I want to prophesy that they will be able to do the impossible things. In the name of Jesus, I want to declare that Father, you are holding their right hand. And from today, they from this gathering, you will cause them to subdue loins of king. In the name of Jesus, and that from today, you will open a door and no man will shut. In the name of Jesus, 
give them a turn of a ready writer that they will prescribe words of healing they'll be prescribed words of great destiny in the hearts of men and women in the name of Jesus let them be the, your boys let this be the 7,000 you say that they have never touched Baal in the name of Jesus father honor them may they grow in your favor may they grow in wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus I declare increase I declare multiplication from today in the name of Jesus I de declare that their hands are anointed they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover I declare they shall cast out devils in the mighty name of Jesus I declare their words are strong and powerful death and life are in the power of their tongue from whatever they begin to speak tonight to every mountain shall move yonder in the mighty name of Jesus I declare that this generation will conquer the gates of their enemies in the name of Jesus through this generation father I declare that their peers will be saved their peers will be drawn into the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus I want to declare an anointing that will cause them oh God to depopulate hell and populate heaven in the mighty name of Jesus and that is our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit we Amen. pray. Amen. 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 I want to declare that like three Hebrew boys changed the faith of a nation. That they said from today on we will worship your God. That God is raising young men, young women here who will change the worship of this nation. I want to declare that God is raising young men, young women here, like the three Hebrew boys, who will change the song of this nation. I want to declare that God is raising young men, young women here, who will change the business practice of this nation. I want to declare, even in this year, that God may raise young men, young women, who will change the politics of this nation. I'm done with insults. We are done with rhetoric. We are done with noise making. We want leadership. And leaders are here. People who have a heart after God. And a, and a desire for God's own heart. And so I want to declare that we will not just celebrate on this 22nd day of the 22nd year, but we will get to work. I declare that your righteousness, the way you walk, will be a reflection of the righteousness of this nation. Enough of pointing fingers. We will no longer point fingers to others. We will walk upright. As they say, walk the talk. I declare that we will not give or receive bribes because our children are receiving the benefits of a caste act. That we will not give or receive lies. We will not be party to malice and scorn. Because we are planting a seed for the next generation. Enough of the seed of lies, of conniving, of backstabbing that have become the characteristic of Kenya. Enough with the behavior around money, greed, that people have and want more. And our children cannot understand contentment because they have never seen us contented. The Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. So I want to declare to us simple steps. Walk the talk. Simple steps. If you're in a relationship, be faithful. Simple steps. If you're studying, do 
the right thing. Do not plagiarize. Do not copy. Because you're building a character for the work ethic of your future. Our children cannot be raised in homes full of shortcuts. And so I decree and declare that we will walk right. We will walk upright. Because that is the portion of them who are called of God. And so you may not say many amens. But I want to say to you, walk the talk. The word of God says, I beseech you, brethren, you can just stand where you are, because we are finishing. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable worship. If this group here will present our bodies, all of us, yes. as a living sacrifice, yes. and not copy the world, mm -mm. but copy heaven, and allow the Spirit of the Lord to work in our hearts, because without the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to do nothing. May we present our bodies. Because of all the declarations that we have made in here, can we lift our hands as we present? Can you present your body? A living sacrifice. Holy, holy, holy. That means there are things we are coming out of tonight. We are making some personal declarations that, Lord, I'm coming out of this. And you know it. You know your life. In the name of Jesus. Can you speak to the Holy Spirit and tell him to deliver you, to deliver you from this, from these things that you are presenting your body, your body as a living sacrifice. Your body will not be misused. Your body will not be used by the devil. Your body will be to the Lord, to the glory of God. And Lord, as we lift our hands to you. Yes, Lord. And present our bodies, I pray that there is going to be a transformation that can only be done by the Holy Spirit in the lives of these your people. Oh Lord God Almighty, that from today there is going to be a change in our walk. Almighty oh, God, that there is going to be a walking in the Spirit. For when you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. I pray, God, that there is going to be a walking in the Spirit. So that the world in this country of Kenya is going to see men and women that walk in the Spirit. And they're going to walk in the light that they are seeing in the people of God. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, the name that's above every name, every demonic operation of the devil, in the lives of your people, let it be broken tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, young people that are bound by demons, men that are bound by forces of darkness, people that are bound by witchcraft from forefathers, in the name of Jesus, I want to rebuke the powers of darkness. I destroy the kingdoms of Satan, the establishments of God's of, of the devil in God's people. In Jesus' name, I want to announce a release. I declare a release. I announce a release of God's people. Loose the people of God, Satan. Loose the young people that are here. Loose the fathers that are in this place. Loose the mothers that are in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord God Almighty. That there is going to be walking in the spirit. In the spirit and these young people here will influence the young people in this nation to the glory of the name of the Lord. And the mothers and fathers that are here will influence the fathers and mothers that are in this nation. And your servants that stand here will influence other servants of the Lord all over this nation and across the, the globe. Let your name be glorified in the name that's above every name. In the name that's above every name. Let the glory of the Lord fill your people. Let it be upon your people. Let the glory of the Lord be upon your people. In the name that's above every name. 
in that name that's above every name. You are glorified, King Jesus. You are glorified, O oh, King of kings and Lord of lords. You are God above all gods. You are God above all gods. You may put down your hands as I pray this prayer and ask you this question. How is your life? Are you really born again? Because the new birth ushers you to a newness of life. If your life has not changed, then you are not born again. Because it's a new birth. So the new birth means there is going to be a new life. Are you born again? Are you really born again? People know that you are born again. But does God know that you are born again? Some of you will be destroyed if you don't. If you don't yield your life to Christ. Because the devil plans to destroy you. But the Lord wants to rescue you even tonight. The Lord wants to rescue you. Some of you are going through things that you should not be going through. Just because you have not given your life to Christ. And I want to give that chance to some men and women here. That will need to commit their lives to Christ tonight so that you you are sure you are sure that you are part of the kingdom of God that you are born again I'll ask that we open our heads in prayer and I want to ask you this question are you born again are you really born again are you saved is Jesus Lord over your life or will you just go to church Tonight, the Lord can save you, change your life. He loves you. He loves you. And without giving you a chance, if we don't give you that chance, it will be a big failure in this service. If you are here, wherever you are, you are saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life from this day. I'll ask you to raise your right hand. Raise that hand. Don't you worry who is, might be looking at you. But you're saying, I want to be born again. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Raise your hand. Yes, I can see those hands. Are there others? Yes, I see more hands over there. You're saying, I want Jesus. Don't, don't clap hands now. We are in a very serious moment. You're saying, I want Jesus to come into my heart. Raise your hand. Raise that hand. You're, you know yourself. You know you're not born again. And you're saying, I'm tired of living this life. I want Jesus in my life. The mess in my life can only be sort, sorted out by Jesus. Raise your hand. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, I see another hand over there. Anyone else? You're saying, I want salvation. Even if nothing else happened here, if we get a soul coming to Christ, that would be enough. Raise your hand. Is there someone else? Someone else. Maybe you're part of the choir. Yes. Yes, there's, there's another hand. If you raise your hand, don't put it down. Keep it up there. Keep it up there. Tonight, you, you are, you are dis making a decision not to walk with the devil again. To give your life to the life giver, Jesus Christ. Not the destroyer. The thief only comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Anyone else? Raise that hand. Some people may wonder why you're raising your hand. You are the one who knows yourself. Raise that hand. Is there someone else? All of you that have raised your hands, please just come. Come and stand here. And I will ask these servants of the Lord to minister to you as, you, as we close this. This is the most, you are the most important person now in this service. Just walk, come out of where you are. Or you didn't even raise your hand. But you are saying tonight, I'm not going home the way I am. I want Jesus to come into my heart. Walk and come. Come where you, from where you are. Come, yes, yes, yes. Yes, you are the most, these are the most important people. There's great joy in heaven when one soul, when one person, comes to the Lord. There is great joy. Hallelujah. 
The Lord bless you. Is there someone else? You did not raise your hand, but you know you are not walking in the Lord. You are not saved. You are not born again. People think that you are born again, but you are not. Maybe you are in the choir or you, 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 are, you are nailed in your church, but you know you are not born again. Come and receive Christ. Come and receive your salvation in Jesus' mighty name. I say come. Don't let the devil hold you there. Come. Break loose from the bondage of the devil. I say break loose from the power of darkness. Break loose. Let the power of God release you in Jesus' name. Tonight is the night. Tonight is the night of salvation. The Bible says now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the day. Yes, sir. Is there someone else coming? Someone else coming in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Is there someone else coming? Someone else coming. Someone else coming. Someone else coming. The devil want, has been wanting to destroy you. That's why he's been telling you to commit suicide. That's why. That's why it's someone, someone I'm talking to. That's why he's been telling you to commit suicide. Because he wants to destroy you. But refuse to be destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the power of God work in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Is there someone else? Yes. God bless you. You need to be bored enough. Get out of where you are. Get out of where you are. Come and give your life to Christ tonight. I want to give one more chance to someone else. Someone else. There's so much confusion. You have even run from home. And you, you know, you're not born again. You are, and you're so bitter. You're so bitter. I want to I want you to, I'll ask you to come when you give your life to Christ it's going to make all the difference God bless you young man is there someone else is there someone else we want to give you a chance we want to give you this opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah bless be the name of the Lord bless be the name of the Lord hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There is great joy in heaven. Amen. Heaven is rejoicing Amen. because of these people that have given their lives to Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I'll ask you to lift up your hands to the Lord. You that are out there, stretch out your hands towards them. I would ask these servants of the Lord, I know we normally get other people to do it, but this is a special night, a national night kind of. Let's just bless them. I'll ask, I'll ask you to go and just bless them. Receive them and bless them in the name of Jesus. I'm going to lead you in this prayer of repentance. These servants of the Lord will come and bless you in Jesus' name and our hosts will will show what will happen to especially in the in the follow up but pray with me this prayer lord jesus i come to you i am a sinner i repent of my sins and i welcome you into my heart and i welcome you into my heart lord. wash me now wash me now with the precious blood with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I reject the devil. I reject the devil. And all his works. And all his works. I disconnect myself. I disconnect myself. From the covenants of my forefathers. From the covenants of my forefathers. The covenants in my family. The covenants in my family. The covenants of my tribe. The covenants of my tribe. I reject them. I reject them. And I get into a covenant now. And I get into a covenant with now. the Lord Jesus Christ. With the Lord Jesus Christ. Through his shed blood. Through his shed blood. And I thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. For hearing. For hearing. For answering. For answering. For setting me free. For setting me free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. As I pray this prayer, please 
let people just uh, lead us or pastors pray for them pray for them in the name of the Lord pray for them in the name of the Lord Lord we want to thank you as, as we receive these people into the kingdom breaking every every fetter I announce every fetter broken I announce every fetter broken I announce every chain broken by the power of the almighty God every chain broken every chain broken every chain broken in the name of Jesus Christ oh Lord God Almighty let every fetter be broken every fetter be broken in the name of Jesus Christ Oh, hallelujah. We want to thank you, Lord, because you are God. And you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are exalted forever. We declare your peace upon your people. Salvation upon your people. Deliverance upon your people. The glory of God upon your people. And let your name be glorified. Oh, Lord, we want to thank you because you have done it. And your name is greatly glorified. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I will request Reverend Yangao to, if you can know what to do with the harvest. Bona Sifiwe, we celebrate each one of you. Let's give God a big hand. Come on, somebody, let's celebrate these ones who have come forth. Amen. Amen. Now look at me, look at me. Because we're going to take a minute with you. You're very special. Uh, our pastors and our ushers, uh, Pastor Flav and the team here, we'd like to, to have you in the prayer room. You'll just go this way. We want to take your name and your contact so that we can get in touch with you. We want to put something in your hand, a gift, as you start your journey. Let me tell you this. The Bible says, if anyone is in Christ... He's a new creation. The way you came is not the way you're going to go. Something has happened in your life. In Jesus' name. So, Pastor Washira and the team, please, if you can just go to my left. Uh, you'll be guided. We'll just spend about five minutes with you, and then you'll be able to go back to your seats. And what a day. What a night. Amen. Amen.
Oh, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We lift you up. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Let's just sing it softly. Jina la koni Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. We wendi we. Bwana, Bwana, Bwana. Tunaku pa mamlaka, mamlaka, mamlaka. Ilele. Jina la koni Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. We wendi we. Wana, wana, wana. Tunakupa. Lord, a mighty clap of praise, He's worthy. We lift you up, O oh Lord. Would you please, please be seated? If you can give me on the screen, on NJKV, Isaiah 42, verse 22. Just let it stay there. New King James Version, Isaiah 42, verse 22. I want us to read this together. It says, This is a people. I can't hear you. Let's do that together again. And so there needs to be a saying and a doing. To restore is to go back to a place previously enjoyed. To restore is to recover and restitute. Recover everything and restitute. And so we want to restore three areas. But before we do that, I'd like to let you know from that verse that there are three things that can happen. People can be so plundered that they get used to it. People can get used to oppression. Like now Kenyans are saying, let's not plan for August. Have you heard that somewhere? What are people saying? We can't work with August because you never People can get conditioned and get used to do what? To being oppressed. When that happens, you need those that can dig them out with the rallying cry, restore. And God must give that word to the restorers. And that's what God is calling this meeting to do today. To restore. The second thing that can happen is that there can be an absence of God's redemptive word. There can be a lot of word that comes, but the redemption is not happening. You see, God, God's word works like this it reverses and accelerates. It reverses the work of Satan and accelerates the work of God in your life. And so until there is a reverse, there cannot be an acceleration. Especially when there has been a situation where there is an oppression. Thirdly and lastly, what is an oppression? An oppression is an area where you are held as a slave and you cannot 
fulfill the purposes of God for your life with that area. It's like an area where you can no longer use. It's something you can no longer use. The enemy has, has it, he has kept it, and has told you. You know those things we used to do when we were kids growing up in Mtaani? You take someone something and then you stick your tongue out at them. No. It's like, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. You're just going to look at me because I'm stronger than you. An oppression is an area, as Pastor Julian said, that requires a greater power, a greater to deliver. And not just a greater to deliver, but an understanding of the people to be delivered so that they embrace the deliverance. So that when the people who are going to shout restore, shout restore, those to whom that word is shouted have developed an inner understanding, software. Ask your neighbor, do you have the software of restoration? Because some people, you can talk to them and they just look at you and say, hmm, I don't even think that can happen. With the politicians we have. Have you heard that statement? I don't even think that can. They behave like that guy who was leaning on the king's hand. Do you remember that story? It was said, oh, you know, tomorrow, Elisha says, tomorrow, there will be food, <laughs> and it will be cheap. And there was a guy leaning on the king's hand, and the guy said, can never happen. Can never, can never happen. Elijah told him, judged him on the spot. It will happen, but you won't see it. The guy did not have the software. And so, today we will decree those three things, that God will restore his people, but God will prepare his people for that restoration, and that God will raise those that will ask and declare, restore. Praise the Lord. Let's stand up. Let's raise your hand and begin to worship him. Father, we cry for this nation. One of the things that has happened this evening is we've begun to cry over this nation in a very deep place. But let me tell you one of the things that defiles a nation deeply, it is innocent blood. I want us to begin to cry for this nation because of the wanton murder. People just disappear. The next thing you read, they what? Died. People disappear, then you find them in Rivayala when they were abducted from elsewhere. We need to speak to the blood of Abel so that it stops speaking to the throne of God. Because that thing annoys God. All the time that I was seated there worshiping, the Lord was telling me his heart is heavy because of the blood and he's grieving because death has become normal, especially by murder. I'm not talking about disease. Disease is an oppression, but murder. Disease needs to be broken, but murder. Please begin to cry out to the Lord. Father, would you cleanse this land? Cleanse this land. From the blood of Abel that cries out to you, judgment. And would you restore? Restore the purity of this land. We speak the blood of Jesus over this land. That oppression will no longer live in this land because of murder. Because so many are quick to take others' lives because they can subvert justice. Restore us to righteousness. Restore us to the place where we value our lives and the lives of others. Restore us, O oh God. Let us cry out to God for the sake of the young people that are in prison. Their case files have been lost. They don't know where they are in the judicial process. They have not been convicted and they can't be tried and they can't be released. They are stuck in prison. There are thousands of young men and women stuck in the remand system. Cry out to God for this travesty. 
that justice will be served for people who are looking and waiting to be served with justice. Cry out to God to restore justice in this nation. Cry out to God to restore our families. Speak to our families. Especially on occasion, on the occasion of those that are killing each other because of domestic violence. A man kills his wife and his children and then turns the gun on himself. Let's cry to the Lord for our families. Our families, some of which have become empty and broken. Oh Lord, restore. We cry, restore. Restore our families, oh God. Let's cry out to the Lord for the sake of young people and even older people who feel so defeated by life today that they can no longer live. They are taking their own lives. People who are dying left, right, and center. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to have mercy. Have mercy. Let us cry to the Lord for the sake of those who today have no meal and they have not eaten in a while because of poverty. The indignity and shame of poverty. Let us bring this to the Lord. And Lord, we cry restore today. We choose to cry restore in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we choose to connect with heaven and cry, restore. We will no longer be plundered in this nation. We refuse the plunder of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. We pray that you raise men and women who are going to restore this nation. Raise men and women who are going to speak and bring righteousness into the places into the offices. Bring righteousness back into leadership. Restore leadership in this country. In the name of Jesus. With due respect to those who are leading, Father, restore leadership. Restore the kind of leadership that brings progress. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. And lastly, Father, we pray that you raise a church that is holy. Restore the church to holiness, to the fear of God, to true repentance that is both word and deed. 180 degrees turn away from sin. 180 degrees turn away from the things that you hate so that we can start doing the things that you love. Let holiness be our identity. That we are people called to be perfected and are being perfected by you. So that we are perfect as our heavenly father is perfect. And that we shall not lift our, our heads or our hearts to another idol. Father, take away idolatry from the church. Take away idolatry from the church. Take away the idolatry of success. The idolatry of money. The idolatry of unhealthy competition, the immaturity of unforgiveness, and the lack of spirituality, where we build without the Holy Spirit. Take away the immaturity of refusing to forgive and refusing to build on relationships, where we build alone, because we will not forgive and we will not embrace and become brothers. Restore us to holiness. And we shall not raise our eyes to another idol. Restore. Sita budu mungu mingine. Iliona mifano yoyote. Sita 
Kupiga magoti yangu ni sujudu Nitakusanya sadaka zangu ziwe manukato Oh wa Yesu astahili sifa sitabudu Sitabudu miungu mingine Iliyo na mifano yoyote Sitapiga Piga magoti Nyangu ni sujudu Nita kusanya Nita kusanya sadaka Zangu ziwe manu katu Kusanya, Nita kusanya sana oh, Zangu ziwe manu kato oh, Kwa Yesu Asta hili sifa Na le Kerubi na 
serafiti kisema Na malaika wote mbinguni tukisema Wewe Wewe coming to the gathering. This has been an amazing day. Tell your neighbor you're the one who made it amazing. This looks good because you came. Yes, yes, yes. So I want to, I want to take this time to appreciate some few people. I want to call the planning team, gathering planning team, I want to call gathering planning team. I want to call our leaders, Caberia. Yes, come. Minister Caberia, Minister Favor Irene, Pastor George Marsha. Nash, where are you? My wife, my one and only Nashiro. Where is she? She's hiding somewhere. She's been our admin running staff. Eunice, Nash, where are you? Nash? Nash? Oh, Nash. Nash. She's outside? Okay, okay. Somebody, oh, Nash is right there. Cross, cross, cross. Nash, Nash. <laughs> Okay, hello. This amazing team has helped us. Benny, where are you? Benny, you're supposed to be here. Larry Kujapa. Huh? Anash. Rari, where's Rari? Last man get again looked after Chai. Chai, last man get after. Ah, thank you very much. No. And, uh, and our own, our own, see when you, our own Pastor Riggs, come on, Karibu, Karibu, Pastor Riggs. Our own. When we are gathering, we are gathering, we are gathering. I want you guys to appreciate these guys. They spent a lot of time. These guys are amazing. Yep, yep, yep. Yes. Wait, there's, there's one person who's hiding. There's one person who's hiding. Where is Minister Linda Favor? She's serving. She's still serving. Who can you Please. Yeah. 
We want to take the time and appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. These people have been gracious to us. Uh, just to mention, that's Minister Linda Favor, Larry, uh, Minister Favor, Irene, Pastor Deb Nyatuka, uh, Faith Stamp. Then we have the, our own <laughs> Minister Caberia, Timothy, my only wife, Nashilo Saropa. Uh, Muna, Muna, yes, thank you very much. Benny, Mumo, Pastor George, Pastor George, oh sorry, we just sketched now, sorry, Pastor George Marsha, yes. Then we have Eunice Suma, thank you. Uh, Mishira, Mike Mishira, and then Pastor Regan. Then last but not least, the 300 voices. <laughs> Okay, we need to close. We need to. Okay. Hallelujah. We need to Thank you. <laughs> I want to take time also to appreciate all our ministers. Woo! Reverend Ambrose. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I say, Busma, many. This man has been amazing. One, one. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Want to appreciate Reverend Ambrose and the whole Parklands Baptist Church. That is from the media team, uh, John, John Son? Audiovisual. Audiovisual. Uh, ushers, cleaners, yani, yani, protocol team, protocol team at PBC. When we grow up, yani, when we grow up, y yes, yes, security, cleaners, yani, you guys, we are going to do the kitchen team, kitchen team, Ki uh, kitchen team, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to also appreciate Reverend. Admin team, sorry, Aki Staki Vita. Admin, Admin Ya Parklands Baptist. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Staki Vita, thank you. Aki, thank you. Protocol to Meshguru. I want to ask to appreciate Reverend Julian Chula. I celebrate you, sir. I celebrate. <laughs> you. I love you, Daddy. We love you, we love you, we love you. We love you. I want you to appreciate my dad in absentia, Bishop Peter Silla. Yes, celebrate him. Okay, one more. Yeah, before we forget, Talking Hands Department, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want us to appreciate Apostle David Juma in absentia. We are live on Elevate TV because of that man. May God bless him. May God bless him. And Elevate TV. Guys, you better start watching Elevate TV. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend Tom Otieno. I want us also to appreciate my brother, my friend, Pastor David Ewagata. <laughs> I want also to appreciate uh, Bishop Mark Karaoke. <laughs> we love that man. He. We have been practicing every week in his church at House of Bread. Yani, thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Come on, Atwong Galia. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. May God bless you so, so much. 
I want to appreciate Bishop Jack and Reverend Emily Kamere from Life Church. <laughs> faith Ministry. Living Faith Ministries, Nyeri. These people have been gracious and very precious to us. And uh, we are preparing this coming, this week, on Thursday, I'm meeting the gatekeepers and the fathers in Nyeri because of these precious people. Then we are preparing the team. We're preparing the team. We already, how many are we now? Nine. Around between 80, we have a team of around 85 guys, a choir of 85 guys already in Nyeri, in preparation for the gathering Nyeri. Gathering Nyeri will be on the 25th of March. So pray for us. Thank you so, so much, Bishop. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, thank you. And, uh, and the worship lead also, director, Pastor Daniel, and your husband, Noah, thank you. Thank you for coming. So those are the ones who are going to be hosting us in Yeri. I want to take time and appreciate every pastor that came. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> Pastors from the Living Word Church, we have uh, under Dad, who are Reverend Kiange, those who came. Thank you so, so much for coming. Uh, just a minute. I saw Pastor Ben, Calvary Covenant. Still, thank you so, so much. Man of God, thank you, thank you so, so much. <laughs> Reverend Peter Zimbi, St. Francis Anglican Church. Where are they? Washatoka. Thank you so, so much for coming. Uh, pa uh, Pastor Thaddeus Chale. Pastor Maureen Washira, Pastor David Ewagata, Pastor Elizabeth, Elizabeth Akini, Reverend Jackie Othoro, Ruak Assemblies, thank you so, so much for coming. Um, Pastor George Wanjoy, he was here. Yes. Where is he? Is he still here? Victory. He may have left. He may have left. Oh, yes. Senior pastors to Redeem Gospel Church, CVT. Yes. <laughs> Pastor George Wanjohi and Ogla Wanjohi, thank you so much for coming. Pastor Rachel Ngugi, Glorious Word Church. Uh, Minister Martha Shalom from Daystar. Pastor Rachel Ngugi from Daystar University also. Uh, Minister Onesmas Mziwanda Banda. Redeem Gospel Church, Jet View. Apostle John Wesley, I think he left. I want us to appreciate legends in this country. Mr. and Mrs. Japheth Kasanga. Last but not least, I want us to appreciate the pastors and the deacons board of the Parklands Baptist Church. I want to appreciate some few people who worked in my team. Uh, my director, Lameki. Lameki, Lameki. My video director, he's back there. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I want to thank uh, Jack. Jack, where are you? Where's Jack? Yes. I, I want to thank the sound team and uh, the media team this side for helping and working with us to ensure this thing works. Thank you for coming. Thank you for waiting. You know, it's going to midnight and you guys are still here. We love you so, so much. We love you, we love you. Thank you for everyone who joined us online. Thank you for people who prayed for us. Thank you for the people who stood with us. We really appreciate it. I thank you guys. Now, Apenda, Sana, Sana. God bless you so, so much. So, at this point, I want to call Reverend Ambrose, our host, our daddy here, to, to give us the benediction. Let's all rise as we appreciate our dad. To Lakupenda Baba. So even as Pastor Ambrose comes, please let's appreciate Pastor Sila. You're an amazing brother.
Come on, let's appreciate this man of God, a good friend and a brother. God bless you. Okay, we put our hands together for the living God as Pastor Ambrose comes. Come on, let's celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. I want to appreciate my band. I'm sorry, guys. My band. <laughs> I have some Kenya right there. Mr. Larry, Michelle, Mark on the bass also, B. Dan on the sax, Tosh on the fast guitar, lead guitar, Segon on the next one, where is Segon? Oh yes, yeah, Segon is right there, Gabriel right there on acoustic, I want to appreciate Lebon on the drums, Ian on the drums, Jack on the drums, and Vic Victor on the bass also. Victor on the bass, Mobutu on the uh, percussion. This. Uh, I will have the last. Roger, there's one more drama. I said Jack, I said Jeremy, yes. Jeremy Sijakusa, thank you so, so much. Thank you, Ben. Mumo for being a blessing. Thank you, Daddy. Yeah. And and Masha on the chauffeur. Bwana <laughs> Sifiwe. The kind of energy that is in this meeting is like we can stay until tomorrow. Huh? As I lead in the benediction, let's give Jesus one more big hand and just appreciate him, appreciate him, appreciate him. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Father, indeed, you dwell in the praises of your people. From the time we began to this moment, we have sensed your presence. We have sensed the angels among us, the angelic host that cries out day and night, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We thank you for the planning that went into the gathering and then the execution, the practices that the worship team had to go through so that they can release the sound of worship full of excellence to the King of glory. We want to say thank you. Thank you for the ministers whom you released your word through tonight. We thank you for souls that have entered into the kingdom of God because of this gathering. And others who are online who receive Christ in the virtual space, we want to say thank you. And dear Master, we know that even as this gathering which has recorded goes forth even in the days to come, that many others will connect to the precious King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There are those who have traveled. We know our reverend friend from Nyeri coming all the way, preparing for the gathering in Nyeri. We want to pray that in Jesus' name, you're going to show yourself mighty even as they gather. And we pray even for the other locations that have already been set apart. And Lord, indeed, we believe that something has been released from this gathering that is going to cause a revival, a return to the King of glory. How we just say thank you. Father, tonight, as we release each other, we know that we are releasing each other in your hands. We are declaring that the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he's escorting us back to our various destinations. 
to continue to carry this same spirit that we have received back into our homes, into our workplaces, into our situation and social settings, into this city, into this county, country, continent, and the world. So Father, may we go forth with our heads held high as we carry this sound to the ends of the earth. May your name be lifted up. Thank you for receiving our worship and our praise. And all glory goes back to you. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. Shalom. Thank you so, so much, Reverend Ambrose. Even as we get to hear the last song from Pastor Sila and the 300 Voice Choir, we put our hands together for the Jesse K Hospital. And also we appreciate our MCs, Sir Alex Barton and Pastor Maxi. Come on, let's celebrate these wonderful people. And God bless you. Have a blessed evening. Yeah, yeah.